to this meeting of the Bay of Islands Whangara Community Board on uh, Thursday the 4th of August and a special welcome to all of those of you who are in the gallery waiting to present to us and in the public out there listening to us live streaming. Um, thank you for joining us and welcome. Right, I'm going to open the meeting with a karakia. We ask that through the board's discussions and decisions, the representatives elected may advocate on behalf of the Bay of Islands Whangarau community with aroha, imagination, skill and wisdom to achieve a fairer and more united community that enhances the well-being of the community and solves the community's problems efficiently and effectively. Thank you. Now I have apologies from um, just, just a point of order um, as we move through today because we are virtual we will be um, voting painfully individually uh, online by division so please bear with us as we um, go through our various items today. First up I have apologies from member Frank Owen uh, and Manuela Gmur Hornell also councillor Rachel Smith who sits on our committee uh, with speaking about non-voting rights um, is in transit. She's on the road today, so apologies from Rachel. She may tune in if she can. And Councillor David Clendon also sits on our board without voting rights, and he is in our workshop today. So I would like to move those apologies. Do I have a seconder? Yep. Thank you, Dave. Right, so we'll stru move straight on and we in our public forum section this morning, we have um, Anne-Marie Mills, is she present with us today, Joshna? Madam Chair, just before we go on, you'll have to carry that apology decision. Oh, sorry, of course we do. Yeah. Yes, yes, I move, Dave seconded. I'm in support. Sorry, I don't see a voting box. Excuse me, Madam Chair, after, the, after we carry this motion. Um, could we introduce ourselves? We will. We will. Thanks. Thank you. Oh, shit. Just go through some housekeeping. Yes. I'm in support, Lane. Yes. Bruce. Yes. I Hopefully it's not me. Yes. Thank you. Carried. Right, so just a little bit of um, housekeeping. So that's going to be the, the um, system for voting today for those of you that are watching us live streaming. So I'm Belinda Ward, who will be chairing your meeting today. We have apologies from our deputy, uh, Frank Owen, and I will get the other members and um, some of our staff who are here to introduce themselves to you online, starting with Manawai. Kia ora, tēnā koutou, ko Manuai toku ingoa no Wyoming Ahau. I'm the representative for the Moirua Kawakawa area. It's wonderful to see you all today, virtually and beyond. No mai, haere mai. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Lane Eyre. I'm uh, representing the Kerry Kerry Ward. Thank you. Yes, good morning. I'm Bruce Mills and I represent the Whangarao Ward. Kia ora koutou, ko Dave Hukwe Kopa Raua Bear, toko ingoa, uh, no Beach Haven, ki Tamaki Makoto Aho, uh, ke Waipapa, toku kainga noho. Um, good morning, I'm Dave Hukwe Kopa, aka Bear, uh, come from Beach Haven in Auckland and live in Waipapa representing the Kirikiri subdivision. Tēnā koutou kato. Doshna. Good morning, I'm Joshna. I'm from the Democracy Services team. I'm uh, the meeting administrator for today's meeting. Thank you, Joshna. Thank you. And Catherine. Good morning, everybody. My name is Catherine True, and I'm one of the funding advisors for Far North District Council. Morning, Catherine. Any other staff there who join joining us this morning who would like to introduce themselves, please? Uh, kia ora, I'm Ross Baker. I'm the Parks and Reserves Planner for the Far North District Council. Welcome, Ross. Good morning, Glenn Raynham. I'm the Manager of Infrastructure Operations. 
Great, good to see you all. Right, now can I just remind you, if you're not speaking, could you please turn your guests, If you could you please turn your cameras off and keep your microphones off? would be really helpful uh, for us. We do have challenges ac across our district, as you know, with connectivity and anything we can do to improve that will assist. Thank you very much. So first up, we have um, Anne-Marie Mills is coming to speak to us. I'm not sure whether she is here or not in relation to Kitty Kitty Township Reserve's uh, dog walking options. Do we have Anne-Marie in the lobby? I don't see her in the lobby, no. OK. So we'll park that and we'll move on to deputations. Now, first up, um, I have asked Ross Baker, who just introduced himself, our parks, one of our Parks and Reserves planner, to actually just give us a lead into our next speaker, um, who is Christine Hawthorne, landscape architect. So welcome, Ross. This is just in relation to work that is being done at present um, around our reserves which, um, as you all know, is, is our delegation, which keeps us very, very busy. And there's some exciting new progress coming. So welcome, Ross. The floor is yours. Uh, thank you, Belinda. Um, yes, I've been asked to talk uh, as a pre-runner to Christine Hawthorne, who's a landscape architect, who's going to be um, presenting to you shortly. Uh, she's going to be talking uh, with you about potential developments of park or development of parks and reserves uh, through throughout your ward. Um, and I thought it appropriate to um, outline some matters that the board should consider. And, and some of this will be very much common sense, so please excuse me if it's logical. Um, before decisions are made about how any such reserves should be developed based on plans that you may receive or information you re may receive from Christine. So if I go through a bit of a list, uh, excuse me if this uh, sounds as though it's red because it's going to be. Um, firstly, um, I would suggest that um, the first consideration would be, is the proposal for the development in line with the, with the purpose for which the reserve is held or the reserve is, reserves classification? So that's the first thing. Um, is the development appropriate for the location and the setting? Will it impact on the balanced land? Uh, for example, if you're going to put in a half court basketball court, orientated so in the future perhaps it can become a full court. Uh, for, that's just an example. Um, have local hapu uh, views been considered? Should community engagement be undertaken, depending on what it is that you're looking to, to undertake? Is the proposal in line with the reserve management plan? If there is a reserve management plan, and we all understand there's not too many of those. Should a reserve management plan be undertaken first? And of course, that all depend on the scale of what you're looking to do. Um, will there be any negative visual amenity impacts? Will there be any environmental impacts? Should the land be left in an open state? You know, if there's looking to be development there, is that actually appropriate? Perhaps the public would prefer just to see open open space. Who will own the structures post installation? Are there any regulatory consents necessary? Building consents, resource consents. Um, we all know about Cave Creek, so there's, there's liability issues there. Um, consider ongoing maintenance costs and life cycle costing. Whilst there's a cost to build now, who's going to fund the upkeep going forward? Uh, ensure that as built plans are obtained when structures are built and those need to be forwarded through to the IAMS department. Is there any uh, archaeology likely to be impacted or damaged or destroyed as part of groundworks? Will this impact on any sites of significance? Are there any culturally sensitive issues? Wahitapu, for example. Does the proposal represent value for money? And that's obviously forefront of mind to the community board. The big one is consider climate change. How does that play amongst whatever the development may be? 
consider the content of the parks and reserves policy, which was adop adopted a month ago. And I guess the, the big the big one is, um, and I can only ask, is to obtain council staff input early on the proposal um, so that you can um, flush out views and get as assistance if, if necessary. And another obvious one, uh, if you do engage a consultant to provide advice on how the community may, board may enhance reserves, that that um, engagement brief sets out objectives and goals and expectations and is extremely clear so that you know what you're going to get and the consultant knows what their brief is. Um, and uh, through the chair, that's pretty much all I can say in advance of Christine's uh, presentation. I'm welcome That's to one. take questions, that, questions yeah, if you like. You, but, yeah. Any questions from members for Ross at this stage? No, that's great. Ross, I would just like to ask that you circulate that written list if you're reading it, because um, really, with well, you know, with our, with our policy um, being adopted, this new Parks and Reserves policy only one month ago, I think there's a lot that we could learn from that and um, moving forward so that we do our business and make our decisions in, in a much more informed um, way and follow the processes correctly, um, which to date haven't always happened. So um, this is really good news and really exciting news for all our reserves. And we look forward to discovering where they all are as well, um, because we know um, since COVID, people have been exploring their backyards and we're starting to get a lot of um, RFSs and things coming in in relation to potential or proposed reserves. So, um, so thank you for that. Um, if there's no questions, we'll we'll move on to Christine if she's in the lobby, and um, that would Christine be great, is, Ross. Christine is not here yet. That's fine. Okay, not a problem. Um, we counted on Anne Marie. Um, I could just message Christine if you like to see if she can come in. Oh, just on Teams waiting. Hmm, she's waiting somewhere. <laughs> I wonder if she's on the other teams. There was two links, Joshna, attached to. Bear with me. Technology's fabulous when it works, isn't it? We have Councillor Smith um, listening in to us. She's on the road, but she has actually tuned in with us this morning too, which is great. Morena and Rachel, wherever you are. Kia ora koutou. Uh, I'm in the wondrous traffic that is Tamaki Makoto. Uh, oh. Thank you for having me. I'll be here for a couple of hours. Great, lovely, thanks. You're welcome to that traffic too. At least the sun's shining, Rachel. Now, Christine is having difficulty getting into that link. Madam Chair, can you just share her um, mobile number with me on a private chat? Mm -hmm. Our messages are all crossing over, bear with me.
Right, apologies for that. Um, I was hoping to have Christine follow on straight after you, Ross. So we'll just give her a minute and see whether or not Joshna can sort her out. Um, we can, while we're waiting, um, move on to the next deputation. We have... Um, no, nobody there yet, right. So we have a question. Um, Jane Johnson, who is waiting in the lobby, has asked um, what consultant Christine is to talk about. Uh, she's not talking about a consultant. She's actually is a um, landscape architect, and she's coming to speak to us in relation to the um, the re regarding reserves and some work that she's been doing with Tihiku Community Board, just for uh, members and public information. So. Do we have a link there yet, Joshna? Sorry, Madam Chair, we've tried our best. We're trying to get her in. But okay, I'm going to move on to, um, in the interest of time, I'm going to move on to those that are waiting in the lobby. So next we have up um, Rex Wilson, and Rex has submitted a uh, petition, which is item 8.3 on our agenda that we will be speaking to later in the morning. Um, welcome, Rex. You are here as the submitter of the petition and also to speak in support of it. You have five minutes, and we will. All, I will indicate to you one minute out. Um, so don't be afraid when I tell you you've got one minute um, left to speak and um, there may be some questions from members who are online um, with us. So when you're ready, Rex, uh, welcome. And the floor is yours in relation to item 8.3, members. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, good morning. And uh, thank you for the uh, opportunity to address you today. Um, I represent uh, 80 plus signatures from the community, the businesses within the area. Two and a half years of COVID have had a major impact on the pie here at retail stores and uh, tourism sector. Business owners have had to take out additional loans, increase mortgages and lay off employees and take jobs outside of their businesses to survive. Landlords have given us given support in reductions to rental and as you're aware, the government has given subsidies. This has just scratched the surface for, for the cost of running a business uh, we have we have been closed for long periods of time and the overheads don't go away, they just keep occurring. We have empty booking offices, empty retail stores, empty banks. What does this portray to the tourist and the cruise ship market? We are hopeful of a successful 2022-23 summer season, which will allow us to start to clear some debt and begin to recover from an unprecedented economic downturn. In order to allow allow us to recover, this it is critical. It is critical you allow these businesses fair fair trading environment and not allow the Bayou Village Green cruise ship market on the Village Green over 22-23 season. The majority of these market vendors come from out of the Bay of Islands area. They don't pay rates to Far North District Council, employ locals, or support our community resources. I understand six are from out uh, from within the area. The money made by out-of-town vendors is taken out of our community, estimated by a storeholder in 2019 to be around $2.4 million. A vibrant pie here relies on a community relies on community engagement and on, a, and on a successful business sector that employs locals, pays rates, puts its profits back into our community. This model will, where tourists return stay longer and move wider afield, thus benefiting the greater Northland area. A regional tourism in New Zealand, along with Northland Inc, are focusing on generating holistic benefits through our visitor industry. Locally, we should be reviewing our strategies to align with this holistic vision. If we continue with business as usual, we are, we are not forging forward, we are falling behind. The Village Green Market is certainly visionary in its inception some 20 years ago, and serve the area well, but it's 2022 and we have a very different environment. Do we look at the same in 2022 as we did at the turn of the century 22 years ago? 
at, at the 2019-20 cruise ship meeting in Paia, the IDNZ representative emphasized passengers are looking for smaller tours deeper into communities seeking greener tours into forest farms and open spaces. Are we not listening to them? IROC representative at the same meeting said it does not even mention the market on their ships. Three years ago, we engaged with Focus Pai here about the market setting our town. As previous consultations with Focus Pai here and again this year, they have come back with constellations that make very little or no difference. Although they sound generous, all their concessions will bring just four less markets this season. Inviting retailers to sell on the village green alongside the storeholders, the suggestion makes absolutely no business sense. Focus by here have an invested interest in the markets. They generate good income for them. 2019, I think it's around $63,000. We believe this clouds their view on how this affects the retail sector and the community we employ from. We, the businesses in the central business area, also pay an additional 2.8% on our rates annually to focus to manage our CBD. Why is focus not why is focus by here not listening to the community and the business they perceive to represent? I asked the community work to formally endorse this petition and halt the village green cruise ship market for the 22-23 season. We have 14 months until the 2024 season to work collaboratively with council, community board, iwi, focus, business pie and other interested parties with robust consent and consultation. Using this time to update the Village Green Mandate uh, Management Plan and adopt a, a holistic forward thinking plan for sustainable tourism that makes Pai here, our town, an exceptional place to live, work, and visit. And I uh, thank you for your time to uh, let me present to you. And if, if we've got any time left, I'm happy to answer questions. Thanks, Rex. Yes, I'm happy to open up if there are any questions there from you. Any questions for Rex? Manawai. Morena Rex, um, welcome. I'm the community board delegate on the cruise ship committee. And so I wonder if you attended last year's cruise ship committee in Pai here. Uh, I wasn't aware there was one, no I didn't. Yeah. Um, because some of the things that you mentioned were raised, particularly around holistic, um, providing holistic options. And the main focus of that was more Fano, Māori, more tangata whenua products, which the, the customers, the visitors, our manuhiria are asking for. So it was good to hear you kind of reiterate that in your kōrero. Um, my understanding is that the um, markets provide an access point for whānau Māori, for tangata whenua to participate in a way that isn't currently served in the sh current shops and existing businesses. And so um, I just wanted to ask, how have you found consulting with whānau and tangata whenua if you are looking at uh, being serious about um, not having these options available, what's an alternative access point for tangata whenua and what you're suggesting? Uh, I think we just need to get around the table with those people and uh, and engage with them because I think they're not being engaged with currently on a, on a local level and try and encourage it. Um, as a retailer myself, I would, I would like to see us, I would rather put my money towards that um, and supporting those people even if they end up going on to the Village Green free of charge because that represents our area. And I think currently we don't, we're not representing our area. And um, the other question I had is, uh, are in the petition, were there any uh, tangata whenua included in the, position, in the petition that you're aware of? Yes, it was open to them. Um, I didn't did uh, to, to did, sign it yet. Did the mana whenua of Paihia and Waitangi, did they sign that petition? Do you know? Not off 100%, I could have a quick look through it, but I would think there's someone there, yes. Okay, good, Enjoy. thank you. Yep. Now me. Thanks, Manawai. Dave, did you have any questions for Rex? Lane, sorry, he has his hand up. Lane, next. Uh, Rex, thank you very much for your presentation. Um, it, it, it makes a lot of sense to me, unfortunately. Um, a number of people on this board will be aware that I've always questioned the 
viability of the cruise ships. But I, I feel for you and the other retailers in Pai here. Um, I, don't, I don't see that, quite frankly, I don't see the point in tourism if it doesn't bring revenue into our area. Uh, it just wouldn't make any sense to me. But anyway, I thank you for a very sane proposal. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I, th I think if I can just say one other thing, I think it's a, a lot of this is about clearing up the, a lot of um, things that are very grey with council and the, and the, and the village green and the, what it represents. And also, you know, it's, it's, the, I, I believe that most of the people with myself that signed this petition are not anti the village green markets. We are looking to, to, to refine it down to something that works for the town and the community and the iwi that live here. Thanks, Rex. Dave, did you have any questions? No, I just wanted to acknowledge you, um, Rex. And I, I think you probably summed that up at the beginning that, that where something starts um, is, is not really something that should always continue and so obviously need some re-evaluation along the way. So things have changed very much so in the last couple of years. Um, we recognise that. So um, yes, there is quite a bit of process there that council needs to be involved with as well. And we need to hear from local people because at the end of the day, it is a local person's issue um, primarily. So um, thank you for bringing it to uh, our attention. And um, I look forward to following this um, over the next few months as we see how that develops. So kia ora. Thank you. Thank you, Rex. Um, I note that Christine um, Hawthorne is in the room. Christine, um, we're just in the middle of doing some some deputations, um, and I have, I think, a member sitting offshore waiting to uh, in the lobby to come in. So, if you don't mind turning your camera off, if if Robin is there, um, Robin Stent, are you with us? Joshna, do we have a connection with Robin? I do not see her in our lobby, no. Okay, so the next speaker uh, I have down was uh, Craig Johnson. Speaking in support of the petition. Hey Belinda, did you want um, Jane to go first in place of Robin or would you like me to speak? Morning, Jane. Are you speaking on behalf of Robin if she can't connect? That's right. That's what I'm. Oh. Yes, that's what I'm here for. Yes. Thank, thanks, Craig. Yes, if you turn your camera off, we'll take you. Can you hear me day. now? Thank you. Oh yes, Robin. We've got Robin. Hi from the Caribbean or wherever you are. Uh, good morning, Robin. If you would camera. like. Don't worry if you can't use your camera for uh, data. That's fine, but you have five minutes with us, Robin, to speak in support of the petition if you can hear me clearly. Okay, can you hear me clearly? Just yes. nod. Yes, we can. Yes, okay, because when I when you can hear me, I can't hear you. Okay, I'm, I have given a full presentation, which um, I hope members have read, but I have a verbal presentation or submission here to give to you, which shouldn't take very long. Um, I just want to really add some summary. And in particular, my comment is the decision must be pragmatic, that too often emotions have got involved over the years in this particular, um, in, on this issue. And so I think it needs to be an intellectual debate. For the community board and council, the decision has to be for the best for this entire community and its ratepayers. Not, it's not about questions like focus. Is it a great organisation? Does it do good work? And the fact is we all agree it does. But the question we're asking is why should shops, bars, activities, et cetera, in Paihia suffer a drop in turnover on the best days available for them? People are wandering around looking at the markets, in particular because no other town in the whole of New Zealand has given them one. No council will give up land for it. And the time spent there from, by those passengers means they do not utilise the local activities. Markets have different offerings we hear, but we agree with that. But why don't they sell their wares to shops to sell for them all year round, just not on the busy days? We are busy crying out for local um, wares to sell, and that would be great. But in particular, they don't pay rates and they don't contribute to this community very much. There's very few of them that come from the local community. So why should we advantage them? 
there's another comment made, we've come to expect markets. But then my question to that is who's come to expect them and why? If markets are providing something different and want to be here, then let's have a market once a month on a set weekend day, like the first Sunday of every month, for example, and use it to attract locals and visitors all year round. If a ship happens to be there that day, then the markets will benefit and be in the same position as, as the rest of us ratepayers are. So a pragmatic, pragmatic decision means making one that's based on the reality of a small provincial town where business survives providing service and employment all year round based on achieving well only in the summer season. And we've now had five seasons, three, five winters basically, where we have not been able to put any, as I call them, nuts away for any more summers. It's all gone. So the questions really here are, do we want what is best for this town and its businesses, residents, and its, visit, and its, its visitors as well? On the best days trade, should we bring markets in from out of town to reduce that local trade? And do we want a vibrant town 365 days of the year? And do we want the highest possible employment in the Northland and in particularly in Pohia? Then there's the question of what if there is no markets? What can customers do? And the passengers do? Well, they can swim, they can walk, they can visit bars, they can buy a coffee, they can buy an ice cream. They can go to Russell, they can get a snack, they can visit the bakery, they can talk to locals, they can visit the op shop, they take a ride, Hayek, shop, hire a yacht, go to a winery, I mean, this does go on and on. They can walk down the Opal Maria, they can hire a bike. Cruise ships should be telling people about things like swimming on our beaches. I don't think I've ever seen anybody swim on our beaches, which they do in all the other ports they go to. So all these are activities, services and local beauty that are inherent in our community. Um, then comes the question, well, we don't want an empty village green. Well, look, we sure as hell can use it for other purposes. By way of example, at the far end, we could employ a small area to be used to sell those services that are only available on cruise days. There's lots of people there that do that and they turn up around the bus area where it's dangerous and there's chaos and we're very lucky in my opinion we've had no health and safety issues as a result. They can tout down there and pay a percentage of their trade to focus for the use of that facility. The area close to Williams Road could be used for haka haka groups, for buskers, for local wineries etc and on Thursdays the farmer's market can be there selling its bread, cheese, fruit and show off our local product to entice visitors back to our region. So in conclusion, I do want to say that I understand the council, as, as have the local people, been very happy for Focus to be managing and providing service for them in our community. And this convenience, however, should not be part of an intellectual debate we're going to have in a decision that is pragmatic. They are a contract service provider in the same way as others, and their activities and use of our special rates monies should be an open book in the same way as council is accountable for the rates paid to them. So um, that's my verbal submission. Sorry, I hope I didn't go on too long. Can you still hear me? Are you there? That's wonderful. Thank you very much, Robin. Heard you clearly and precisely. Um, any questions? Can you hear if I ask for questions? Oh, I can, can hear, hear you. Us? I've got I've got my phone to my ear. Yes, so I can hear you now. Thank you. Uh, we have a question from Manawai Wells. Hi, Manawai. Morning, uh, uh, morning, Afano. And uh, apologies, I should have also introduced in my previous life, I was manager for the Kawati Caves. I'm a descendant of Te Tawe and Mata Kawati, who are the owners of that property and the trust is um, uh, governed by them. So uh, I had worked for them for 26 years and I've literally seen the birth of this industry and this market over time. And uh, one of the things I noticed is that 2017, 2018, um, that the cruise ship numbers ballooned, as we know, they went through the roof, um, and um, there was a real lack of products that um, the customers and Manuhiri wanted, so they were drawn out to other areas. And one of the things I see that um, can be quite helpful about having the markets is that it, it does actually retain those visitors within the township instead of drawing them out to other markets and other areas. I know the Kawati Caves had a market that year, Kawakawa Township had their own markets and it did draw a lot of um, visitors out and they stayed there longer and they purchased in those towns. So I guess I'd um, just offer 
um, an opportunity for further consideration about what that may do removing these markets. It might just provide a gap, um, an opportunity gap for other communities to draw people out. And uh, for that year, we had 18, um, around 18 cruise ship buses a day going out to Waiomeo and into Kawakawa. It's a significant amount of people who would probably come back earlier and then spend some time at the markets and then um, make their way through Paihia Township. But if those markets aren't there, then um, and they are in other areas, then they're likely to spend that money in, those op in other places and those opportunities might disappear for Paihia in some way, shape or form. So I just wanted to offer that to you. Um, I'm, uh, in that knowledge, I know that there are specific segments that products from Fano and Tangata Whenua appeal to that are not currently offered in Pai here. And so if um, if the petition and if things go in your favour, perhaps also look to um, including Tangata Whenua, Mana Whenua in your vision and your movement forward if you're seeing that it's not happening currently. So really not, not really much of a question, just points of encouragement. Thanks, Manawai, and, and, and we'll I take that up later could, when we discuss the if item. If I could comment on, if I can comment on that, I think that is wonderful that the the, the amount of income that comes from cruise shops should, should be spread around the far north. They arrive in Pai here, but they are going off to other places. The question here is that in Pai here, we have everything that's available with our shops that are there that are paying every day and we don't want empty leases and we're getting very close to that. We've already got some major uh, problems in the town with people sleeping outside and stuff. We just do not want to get to that stage, uh, but we do want the money spread around the far north. We're talking about our concerns that most of these markets that come are not from the far north. They're, they're coming from as far away as um, Wellsford, et cetera, coming for the day. And there is the other issue that we who are there 365 days would love more local product if we could get it. So we perhaps need to start some better discussions around that because um, that's what we're there for, to actually sell local product 365 days a year. Thanks, Robin. I'm going to have to stop you there. Your time Thanks, is right. well up. Thank you so Thank much you for joining much. us. Um, you know you're welcome to hang in there, there and watch or watch the recording later. Um, but enjoy you. um, your time wherever you are. And thanks for, for okay. coming in. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye. Bye all. Right. I'm Thank you. I'm now going to take um, the third speaker that we have for this deputation in support of the petition, and then we will move to Christine Hawthorne, who is waiting in the lobby. So welcome, Craig. You're speaking also um, in support of the petition for the Village Green. You've got five minutes, thanks. Yeah, good morning, everybody. Um, so I'm probably going to take it from a little bit of a different tack and that um, absolutely this, is, this has an effect on our businesses. Um, probably not, not me personally running a dive fishing shop, uh, but I can really see it um, from the other retailers in Williams Road and in our, in our small CBD, how it does get affected um, on those cruise ship days. The cruise ship markets don't just cater to cruise ship passengers. Um, a large majority of people that are actually spending money there are, are the regular visitors here. Um, so often the, the shops that um, are putting on extra staff and so on on those busy cruise ship days are seeing actually a downturn in business with people either not being able to get into the town because it's so busy with the cruise ship that, um, happening um, or those people shopping in through that market area. So that, that definitely has an effect on it. Also, I would question um, two things with the cruise ship market is that um, do they have um, a Hawker street store mobile shop licensing through FNDC? Um, they are street stores uh, that are within 400 metres of our CBD. So under condition seven of that licensing that a Hawker mobile shop stores must be 400 metres from the nearest point to point um, from any business selling like goods and services. Uh, there was a comment made by Grant Harnish um, at the Business Pie here AGM is that that section had been removed from their agreement for running these, these stores, the market on the Village Green, that they were able to sell product in competition. He said that it was a... A quote a, a fair market um, and um, basically um, that they could compete on that side but under 
the licensing of the street stalls, they can't. And they can't even sell any like goods. Um, so I, I would question that and review, are, are these stalls actually being licensed? Um, on, on another side, under the Re Reserves Act, it allows for the hiring out and casual leasing. Um, but any hiring fees taken must go into a reserves fund. Uh, to compensate the local community for the loss of their reserves. I would question that the money that comes to business pie here, true focus pie here, from those stallholders uh, to support the business, the ambassador scheme that is run on cruise ship days isn't, isn't really in the benefit of the local community. It's in the benefit of running that cruise operation and getting people into the township and also going directly to where that market is. So those are those are probably the two main uh, points on that. A lot of a lot of things have been um, uh, said about the cruise ships and that they are a really um, these markets are really a, a reason to visit Pai here. They're not they're not the reason to visit Pai here. It's a it's a nice add on for them. Um, I think Robin has already mentioned and also. Um, Rex previously that the, the cruise ship markets are not really mentioned on the cruise ship. Um, so it's a nice surprise for the, these cruise ship passengers when they get into Pai here that there is a market, but it's really it's, it's things that are sold and things that can be purchased through the stores that are already here and running in the Bay of Islands. Um, yeah, so those are, that's probably the, the main points that I have. Thank you. Happy to answer any questions on those or thank you um, craig and yeah. you've raised um, a couple of really relevant points there in relation to the reserves and the reserves act and the use of uh, any questions for craig no your day is yours craig by the sounds of it oh dave would you do you have a question Craig, sorry, we're sitting here because of the lower bandwidth, so we're, it's not that we're not interested in you, it's just trying to save the, the video feed. Uh, just to acknowledge you coming along uh, and, and all power to um, you for communicating to us. So um, I think we're all hearing what you're saying and acknowledging there needs to be some process moving forward that hopefully is going to resolve um, these issues to give effect to what community want uh, and local community there. So, yeah, thank you. Kia Dave. Yeah, I really think that we just need to take a step back and take some time to reevaluate these things. If we can have a moratorium for this year and consult with our community and our businesses and all of the stakeholders that are involved in this area and get it right, because just because it's happened for 25 years, as you said yourself, doesn't mean that it needs to continue happening. Yep. Bye. Thanks. Good morning, Thanks, Craig. Dave. Thanks, Craig. Uh, one more question, Manawai. Kia ora. Sorry, I'm just trying to put my hand down. Oh, there we go. Uh, <laughs> Kia ora, Craig. Hey, Kia ora. Were you able to attend the cruise ship meeting last year? Uh, no, I wasn't. I'm a small business owner, and um, over the last couple of years, it's been very hard staffing mm -hmm. and being able to do what I do. And when I unfortunately clashed with a day where I was running a dive charter, and I, I couldn't go to it, so no. The, the next cruise ship um, meeting, committee meeting, is being held very soon. It was supposed to be in the last two weeks, but was rescheduled. And um, one of the action points from last year are the things that you're saying, a chance, an opportunity to reevaluate. So it's, it's really great to actually hear all our speakers today look for that opportunity that we raised last year, which is it's a chance to look at something different potentially moving forward. And um, one of the suggestions in that was to hold the meeting at Waitangi Marae. Usually they held it in, at one of the hotel conference rooms. But um, I hope that you will come this year. I think it's going to be in the next two weeks. So if you see that Panui come up, please come along. And um, hopefully Irwin will confirm um, the booking for Waitangi Marae already that booking in place if it goes ahead shows that we are looking at a new direction moving forward potentially so it would be great to have you all there this is yep. really good that you've all come today to to talk to this kia ora yep. 
Thank you yeah, for I'm that. on the email list for that meeting, so we'll do my best to attend it. That's great, thank you. And um, I will follow up to see that there are retail representatives um, invited to that meeting. Um, I'm not quite sure uh, of the full list of invitees, but uh, definitely we'll follow up on that for you, Craig. So thank you for presenting to us. And um, you also can go off and get diving or enjoy that sunshine, whatever you've got planned for today. And um, we're going to discuss this a bit later in our meeting and we're also going to, I'm just going to take a break and we have Christine Hawthorne here. Um, so I will slot her in before we hear those wishing to continue to speak um, in opposition um, to the petition. So thank you for presenting, Craig. Now we shall move back to Christine. Sorry to keep you waiting, Christine. We had a little bit of a time hiccup there. Welcome, Christine Hawthorne, a landscape architect who's here to speak to us in relation to reserves. You're muted, Christine. Yeah, sorry. Um, <laughs> my apologies, our timing was all out of order because our first public forum speaker didn't turn up and we've gone a bit, as we do, out of sync. So That's please, okay. um, the floor is yours for five minutes, um, oh. following on from Ross. Thank um, you who has given us all the uh, the lowdown on things to consider for um, reserves. So mind boggling, okay. but exciting. Well, hopefully, I, I, hopefully I don't repeat too much of what he may have said. There I'm is sure an obvious, obvious overlap there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All Thank right. You. Well, good morning, everybody. Um, I'm Christine Hawthorne. I'm a landscape architect. Um, I've been based my business in Kerikiri Kiri for the last um, 30 years. So probably some of you know me. Um, and of course I grew up in, in Northland. Um, so my business is primarily landscape design and planning. And I have recently been working for the Tahiku Community Board, um, preparing um, plans for them for their reserves um, and connections and placemaking concept planning for the Tahiku area. Um, the area they asked me to look at was between Hihi and the Karikari Peninsula, so up to Whatafifi and Rengiputa, um, and basically all the areas in between um, with, you know, Cooper's Beach and Monganui, Taipa. Um, so basically, uh, today I'm just going to have a quick chat to you about what I did for them and how that could possibly be utilised as a model um, for the Bay of Islands Whangaroa Community um, Board as well for that area um, as a bit of an identification tool, really. Um, so, yeah, so basically what I did to start with, obviously, um, I pretty much saw Ross very early on, um, to try and identify all the reserves within that within that area because some of them aren't really obvious to start with when you're looking um, and some of them aren't even fully on maps. So with Ross's help and Lynn's um, website, we were able to identify most of the reserves. Um, and so it wasn't just council reserves that I was looking at. There's obviously there's legal road and there's crown land, um, there's de department of conservation um, areas although we weren't suggesting too much on those um, dot sites and areas, um, there's a bigger picture and there's the connections and how you link them all in together. Um, so it's basically identifying all of those on a plan um, and researching them and those areas um, as to, you know, how they can be utilised. So, of course, you know, how some of those spaces can be utilised apart from their designation as legal road and reserves and things like that, is also the district plan maps because you have things like the different zones, the resource areas, you know, outstanding landscapes, um, sites of significance, cultural significance, um, flooding and things like that. So you've sort of, you're basically building a bit of a, a big picture of how these spaces and sites can be, be utilised and um, made nicer for the public basically and opening up those opening up some of these areas to the public because what I found when I did my research once I got out on site and had a good look around um, often these reserves if they're not managed by the council they're often they get looked after by an adjoining landowner especially if they're next to the water um, and what you'll find often is that um, the public access to these spaces becomes gradually over the years 
um, hindered by fencing or hedges or things like that. And then the general public don't realise that it's even public land. Um, and then that, that can block a lot of um, reserves that are kind of landlocked in a sense, or, or landlocked also by, by the water, you know, and you can't get to them. So basically it was sort of a lot of research to start with to figure all these areas out. Um, and then from there on, uh, I, did, I did do a little bit of public consultation, um, not too much as that wasn't really part of my brief, but you know, to come up with ideas and concepts as to how these spaces can be used, um, there are some some key stakeholders that needed really to be talked to at the beginning. Not not so much the general public, but people who have a real vested interest in the reserves, and a lot of people who are doing volunteer work and looking after these places, and they know them well, and they've been looking after them for years. Um, and also, in addition to that, uh, a lot of these reserves. Um, are sites that are, are very significant to the local iwi as well, uh, particularly some of the dock sites because, you know, the, a lot of the past sites are administered by Department of Conservation. So, um, so those key people, um, we did do some consultation with them um, at the beginning. Um, so, so from there, once we'd sort of identified everything, we started looking at how we would connect all of these reserves and ha have the connections in terms of um, maybe in some areas you might have a shared pathway, cycleway pathway, you know, 2.2 metres wide and possibly even concreted in some of the areas. Um, other areas that might have just been gravel pathways, walkways, cycleways. Um, and in some areas, you know, to get around the coast, particularly around the Cooper's Beach area, you know, little boardwalks or even just little tiny, tiny walking tracks, you know, just to get access around the coastline. Um, and, and in addition to that, obviously the signage, you know, we needed signage to let the public know that, hey, this is public land, that's private over there, stick to these areas. Um, you know, look after these spaces, be respectful. So, so that was sort of the key aspect of, of you know, doing development on these reserves, especially for the people who have um, used them as their own for the last, you know, 30 or 40 years, um, you know, that you can meet a little bit of resistance there. So it's, it's a bit of a tender process, that one. Um, Christine, if you could just sort of wrap it up a bit. Sorry, we are tight on time today. Oh, yep, sorry, and, no worries. I'll, I'll that's speak all right. through the last little bit. Yeah, just um, how we fit into this. Yeah. So, ba so basically, um, some of the reserves, we obviously enhance some of the facilities on them with the playgrounds as well, um, and enhancing the environment on some of them and rehabilitation and things like that. So, so I think the, the bigger picture for for it was is creating you know creating reserves and spaces um, and opening them up that are currently closed to the public so that the general public can use them for their enjoyment and well-being basically um, you know and and providing facilities for the wider public but not only that for people visiting our our area as well because you know providing those sort of facilities for people and attractions. For example, the cycle trails, you know, creating new cycle trails um, and new facilities. So um, yeah, and ba basically that, that was the concept planning stage. And then the next stage would be once they've adopted those sorts of concept ideas would be to get into the design, detailed design and the full public consultation and consultation with all the other interested parties and feedback. So yeah, sorry. That's wonderful, thank you, Christine. Uh, yeah, well, it's it's a it's a big, a big picture topic to jam mm. into five minutes, and yeah. um, it was yeah. just to really give an overview um, to the board and the public listening as to what you're working on with the Tehiku Community Board and how we can work with you um, in the future, this board or the new incoming board, so that you know, perhaps it could be workshop so that we get some sort of concept together as well, which mm. will go into our strategic plan and, and be fed into the uh, long-term plan and the annual plan so that we can get some 
staged progression um, in place and perhaps follow from Tihiku South. Um, Bruce, I know that will interest you starting up in your area there, uh, so that we have a document um, and, and we know we're the fastest growing area um, in this eastern border, though Cooper's Beach would probably challenge that, mm. um, just so that we do have some sort of um, guiding document Yep. to um, to future proofing access to all our reserves for all that, people. That, that was one of the key elements that Felicity Foy was really interested in is once they've got some plans sitting there, if there's some funding became available, you know, they could put their hand up and hey, we've already got some plans and it would be submitted and it's quick, you know, you can sort of yes. jump on it when you can. <laughs> yes. Fabulous planning, great, great idea. So we thank you for um, introducing the work that you're doing with them to us. And um, we certainly yeah. look forward to um, following on from their model and um, workshopping and working with you in the future so that we can get some um, budget or line item beside um, some planning and, and find out where all those reserves and accesses are and yeah. connectivity is the key, of yeah. course, linking them together. So thank you. Thank you. Thank, you. thank you very much for presenting to us and I'm sure right. we'll see you again in the future. All right. Thanks. Bye. Thanks, Christine. Bye. Now, apologies to those of you who are waiting in the lobby. Uh, we have had three speakers for deputations um, in support of the petition. However, I am aware that we do have um, one or two members of the public who are um, Village Green Craft Market um, stall holders who may also wish to speak for or against the petition. So I would like to bring you uh, on board first. If you were there, do we have... Um, I think maybe Julie Cunningham. Julie, are you still with us? Yes. Welcome. Um, Sorry for the wait. Apologies. Um, no, no problem. It's a bit awkward when we're virtual, isn't it? You can't sort of wander off the same. So, Julie, you have five minutes to, to talk to us. Um, I think you are opposing, is that correct, the petition? Yes, in a way, yes. Okay, fine. Thank you. We'll we'll listen. You've got five minutes. I wrote a letter which you all have read. I'm trusting that was dated the 12th of July. When I wrote that letter, I wasn't aware of the petition. I've since had the opportunity to read the petition and see who signed it and read the letters of support for the petition and understand a little more about exactly why that petition was formed. Um, excuse me. This petition states that they want the market to cease operation at all. Um, the, all of the letters have the same concern. All of the letters supporting that petition have the same concern. They're all concerned that money is coming, going into the going into the hands of non-locals and being taken out of town to their hometowns instead of staying in the Bay of Islands where it's really needed right now. Excuse me, I've got some notes. Um, the question needs to be asked, would local locals have signed a petition stating that the market should be restricted to Bay of Islands locals as artisans? And I think with our strong community spirit, the answer to that question would be yes. The recent pandemic has affected everyone, artisans included. We all have bills to pay and we've all suffered and we've all managed to tread water. The agreement between Focus Pie here and Business Pie here that uh, as the petition is against still allows for non-locals to take profits from our town and our area back to their home towns. Whilst we're trying to repair our spirits and repay debts from a situation beyond our control, storeholders and retailers in Pie here should be working alongside each other like they are in Russell. This would make a peaceful, united atmosphere as opposed to the current conflicted one. Out of our town would be buzzing with harmony and visitors would notice. There's no shortage of talented artisans in the Bay of Islands. In Russell, they have a market every Saturday and 12 local artisans attend that market. They also have a cruise ship market over there every time there's a cruise ship in the bay and a separate 12 local artisans attend that market. 
what has happened in recent years is because there's so many out of town people that aren't residents of the Bay of Islands, the market's been too full for local iwi and artists to actually have the opportunity to present their wares for sale. With the assistance of Focus Paihia's strict guidelines regarding quality and display, we can represent a market to be really proud of. We all, we're all aware that the Bay of Islands is the only viable cruise ship destination north of Auckland, and by being so, could mean that all Northlanders have the right to present their markets at the cruise ship market. That has been, I think, the belief in the past. Well, this is not the past anymore. This is a new future that nobody could foresee happening, and we need to support our local communities. We would be... In this time of recovery from the pandemic, we all need to be focused on supporting our local towns and our local communities. This means attending our local markets and putting the money back into the community. Returning the Bay of Islands market back to what it originally was, which was 20 years, 20 odd years ago when it started, was actually Bay of Islands artisans, makes everybody peaceful. Residents of the Bay of Islands are proud of our unique beauty of our region, and now we have the opportunity to showcase, showcase the talent that lives here. Visitors can take away something actually made in the Bay of Islands rather than made in towns their ship never entered. And after chatting with stallholders and retailers while they're shopping, they can also tell their families and relatives about our fabulous town spirit while they're showing them the treasures that they've found. I hope that during the process of seeking a reasonable practical solution that suits the whole community, you will agree <coughs> That changing the pie here art and craft market back to Bay of Islands artisans at present will indeed add connecti connectivity and pride to our community. This will also give many local iwi and people who could never get to the markets before because it was full of out of towners, it will give them a wonderful opportunity. So that's about all I have to say in respect of backing up my letter. Um, as I said, I, I wasn't aware that all of this had happened when I wrote that letter or the due process of how to go about actually trying to stand up for us locals. Um, I, I really think that we need to look on our community spirit and we should all be getting along rather than fighting against each other. Thank thanks. you for your time. Thank you, Julie, and um, thanks for waiting around to address us. Do I have any questions from members for Julie? Manawai, question for Julie? Kia ora, not a question. I just heard that you said you talked to every, you know, people from both sides. <laughs> and I just wanted to say how much I appreciated um, someone doing that because it looks like conversations need to happen. And um, it, it's good to know that people are quite, it's great to hear from everyone coming into this space, but it's really about everyone talking to each other, not yes. just. <laughs> one one point I did forget to make is I've been on several cruise ships and whenever you go on a cruise ship and it gets close to the port you're going into, there's an entire area full of all activities in that local area. And that includes markets, it includes vineyard tours, it includes going to Kau, every in our particular case, going to Kau, Kau all of that. Every cruise ship all around the world does that as you're entering any port. They all have, and they mention our markets because it's something that the cruise ship passengers go back on board and rave about. So it would be a shame to see it lost. Yes, this, Thanks, um, Julie. this conversation's really about I, the expression of community identity. Yes. And we must have everyone involved in that discussion, including Tangata Whenua, all of our locals as well. Thanks, Manawai. Yes. Thank you, Julie. You're welcome to stay on and listen to other presenters. Thank Enjoy you. your day. Now, do we have any other craft market stallholder users who would like to speak to the petition? Waiting in the lobby? 
no, then I will move on to those that are speaking in uh, opposition. Uh, sorry, sorry interrupt you, uh, Madam Chair. Um, yes. I'm just going to say I saw Wendy. <laughs> Against the petition, it's Marty Robinson here. Kia yeah, hi Marty. I'm just doing doing craft um, stall holders at present. Anybody in the lobby waiting to speak in relation from the stall holders perspective? And then I will move on to deputations opposing the petition. Thank you. Kia ora. So Julie is the only person from representing the stall holders. So now we will move on to those opposing the position, uh, sorry, the petition. And first up, um, we can, do you have a preference of order? I have Charles Parker, Wendy Hopkinson and Marty Robinson. Kia ora, Wendy, would you like to start? Would you like to yeah. open? Thank you. Um, good morning, everybody, and thank you thank very you. much for the opportunity to speak with you all. It's very much appreciated. Um, for those who don't know who I am, I represent um, company IDNZ. I'm the local Bay of Islands port manager. So I've been involved with the cruise ship um, side of things for the last 13 years that I've worked for ID. I guess some background here, brief background would be appropriate. Um, when I first came along to this role with IDNZ 15, oh, sorry, 13 years ago, things were pretty grim um, in the cruise ship front. We had about 20 ships a year calling. Um, and there was um, a feeling that the passengers were sent ashore and sort of aimlessly wandered around with no no purpose or no direction. And it was then that um, Business Pie here and and particularly got together and, and established the Ambassador Program, which is um, funded by the stallholders on the market. And that was to welcome, um, give information, guide people into the central Paihe area from the Waitangi Wharf where they would land and ensure that everybody that came off the ships was funneled through the main retail precinct. There was a there was a market in existence at the time, but it was a bit disorganised and it was a bit in a bit of um, sort of disarray. So I think there was some energy put into coordinating and bringing that market up to a standard that was um, certainly worthy of, of the... Um, the visitors that were coming ashore. That's not taking anything away from what the retail precinct in town has done. They've done an amazing job over the years, and that's borne by certainly the, the number of bags from certain retailers we see going back to the ships and the tender queues on a daily basis when we're down at the Waitangi Wharf. So that's a good thing to see. Um, the cruise industry itself, I think to qualify some questions that were put by one of the board members, is worth about $130 million to the Northland economy. Now, that is made up by Statistics New Zealand from FPOS transactions that take part, place on the days of cruise ships visiting the town, information provided by the local port authorities um, about the fees that are paid by the ships coming in, information provided by the company I work for and others about the value of product that is being sold on tours, um, so that 130 million is spread across quite a significant base, but that information is gathered by Statistics New Zealand and given through to the New Zealand Cruise Association. That um, also tells us that there are 120,000 passengers a year coming through on cruise in the 1920 year. Um, this year, I think we've got 49 ships booked to call around that. I think that could change, um, but around about 49, with a view to, I think, in the 23, 24, getting back up to that, that sort of 70 ships where we were prior to the pause for the pandemic. Um, the cruise lines send, regularly send senior management teams to the Bay of Islands, just basically um, perusing the experience that the passengers are having when they come ashore. And there's always very positive comment from those senior management people about the overall welcome that they receive from the Paihe area, or the Bay of Islands area overall, and about the particularly about how much they enjoy the markets and how what a wonderful flavour they bring to the experience. So I think, you know, it's something that we need to sort of keep in mind there. I think that um, the other thing, too, that people probably are not aware of is that um, Carnival particularly, which is the main stable for Princess, Cunard, um, Holland America, those cruise lines, have been working very closely with um, the local community outside of our Involvement. This is something that they took the initiative themselves and have funded um, and tried to establish the Māori markets down at the Marae at Waitangi. 
and offered some significant financial support to get those up and going, and also contributed um, significantly to the Baybush Action Initiative through consultation with Stella Kake. So there was quite a significant contribution made there by Princess. So they're not just looking at you know what they can get out of it, they're looking at passing back and contributing back through to the communities as well. So I think that's something that, that really we should um, be looking at. The other thing I'd like to mention is that um, we're not the only um, region that are that are working with crews. Whangarei is nipping at our heels very, very, very closely. And they are looking very hard to try and get as much um, involvement in crews as they can get. And obviously they have got advantages over us because we are a tender port. Um, they are not. We're, we're affected by weather. They not so much. So they're nipping at our heels and they're with the One opening minute, of... Wendy. Sorry? One minute left, sorry. Oh, okay. Yeah, thank you. Um, so really, that was, um, I guess, the the main um, the points I wanted to make. The only other point I would make is that, um, and just confirming what what Manawai mentioned, um, was that you know diverting people away from um, Central Pai here, if the markets moved to another location, would be detrimental to everybody. You know, it's front of mind. It's it is is one of the um, you know the key things is to try and keep people moving through the Central Pai here area where the retail hub is. And I think, you know, that, that by taking the markets away from the green and if they were perhaps to expand their presence in Russell, um, what's to, just something to think about. What's to stop the cruise lines from starting to run tenders directly into Russell, bypassing Pai here completely? I think that's something that you'd need to have, you know, have in your minds that that could be a result of, of that. If, um, you know, the port ratings for the Bay of Islands are up there in the top two or three in New Zealand, and that's... We were languishing near the bottom of the port rating, customer satisfaction port ratings issued by the cruise lines um, way back in the day. And we managed to get ourselves up to either two or three on that on a consistent basis. And that's a pretty big achievement for a tender port. Um, diluted by um, the experience being moved into a different area would not end up being so great for everybody. I think that there's certainly... Um, a point that there's a lot of business out there to be had and plenty to go around. So I think that's something that we need to sort of keep in mind as well. Thanks, and Wendy. That's about all I've got to say. Thank you. That's wonderful. Very informative. Um, I've got a question. Hand up from Manawai. Morena, Wendy. Hi. Good to see you. Um, so I've worked with Wendy many times, haven't been the manager at the Kawati Cave, so I just wanted to announce that, that is out there in my previous life. Um, but I wanted to ask, is there a, a SWOT analysis that's presented to the community um, at these cruise ship meetings so that they can understand what the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities and threats are and they can start building on their strengths that their existing business already offers? Because what I heard from some of those speakers uh, or, or, um, that came today who are supported by at least 80 other members of the community um, is that, that disconnected feeling, I thought, between them and the customer and storeholders and that might um, help them look at their business and look at how um, we can work together more carefully and have more consideration moving forward. Is there a SWOT analysis that's presented at these cruise ship meetings that they yes, could? There yes, there is, Manawai, to answer your question. That's um, that's prepared by the New Zealand Cruise Association. Kevin O'Sullivan usually attends these meetings and he has a slide presentation, slideshow that basically quantifies all the figures that I've just mentioned um, in, 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 my, in my speech. Um, so, that, and those, as I say, those figures are gathered by Statistics New Zealand. So, um, yes. And um, would this does this petition pose a threat to this uh, to the cruise ship market, in your opinion? I I don't think it poses a threat. I think what or the or the loss of this cruise ship of the market run is you know what the cruise ships are looking for is they're looking for the satisfaction of the visitor experience, and this is this is one particular part of that visitor experience, which is rated pretty highly by the passengers themselves and the um, the cruise ship companies. So, and also just um, clarifying, there is a lot of information online about the Pai Hia Central Retail Precinct and the types of merchandise that are available. I did a quick research the other day and I managed to find four cruise lines um, actively, you know, sort of promoting and, and pushing the Pai Hia Retail Precinct. Um, and certainly not focusing on the, on the market in any strength, but I think it adds to the overall experience, yes. 
Well, um, if it is perceived as a threat, the loss of this market, it would be nice to see that in that SWOT analysis and then have a risk management plan that can look at med mitigating some of these things moving forward, because it won't be the only thing, but it's just, um, oh, that's just some feedback. Sure, thank you. Thanks, Manawai. Dave, are you trying to get back into the meeting or are you wanting to ask a question? No, I'm here, so it all just froze for a minute, so I'm back. Thank you. Did you have a question for Wendy before we go on to the next speaker? Uh, Wendy, just to acknowledge you um, and for coming along and to, to informing us from your perspective. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for the opportunity. Thanks, Wendy. Next up, we have um, Martin Robinson. Martin, oh, no, we have Charles Parker. Morena uh, Dato. My name is Charles Parker and I chair uh, Business Pi here. Uh, Business Pi here represents 100 businesses or thereabouts in Pi here and its surrounds. And the executive team is made up of 12 uh, business owners and managers. As many people have pointed out, that this issue has the potential to split the association and our business community. And therefore, the association has tried really hard to find a compromise which meets everyone's interests. To that end, uh, and, and I agree it's important that we meet face to face and we talk about these issues and so we met uh, with Rex to understand the retailers perspective this is our exec team we also met with Grant and Sarah from Focus Pioneer to understand the perspective of the market as an association we acknowledge the hard times that have been experienced by everybody in our community including the retailers through COVID but as a group of business people working hard for Pioneer we believe the benefits of the market can't be ignored and you've heard uh, Wendy outline a lot of those benefits just now. As an executive team we're fully supportive of the markets continuing with some compromise to support the retailers in their recovery. This decision by the executive was endorsed at our AGM last Thursday night where a majority of members supported the compromise that we had negotiated for the retail uh, for the market um, with Focus Pi here. And just to outline those compromises that they, they were, that for the month of October 2022, uh, which has four cruise ship visits, there would be no markets. That there would be no markets for ships that carried less than 1,750 passengers. Uh, that the reduced the number of stalls would be reduced for 12 months and that retailers would be given free of charge a stall or the ability to have a stall within the market to uh, give them a boost. So I just wanted to, to move on now to some of the reasons why we believe and made this decision. Uh, we believe that the retail sector is being disrupted by amongst other things the markets. And this, this disruption has occurred in a similar to what happened when Uber entered the taxi market or when Airbnb entered the accommodation sector. This disruption started well before COVID and ultimately disruption is led by the customer preference. What does the customer want? What are they enjoying? And we feel that you ignore the customer at your peril. Wendy touched on this, but if we don't allow the market on, and, and also Manawai, if we don't allow the market on the green, the current vendors who, who really understand the value that cruise ship passengers bring in their spending power, I don't think they're just going to pack up and leave and not come. They will look for an alternative location to ply their trade. That alternative could be Titi Marae. It could be the Paihia Town Hall or it could even be Russell. The impact of this will draw people away from Paihia and the township or that competitive zone. And they may choose not to visit Paihia at all. That will mean that the community will miss out on the valuable funds that come from the market. And I guess an example I'd like to mention to, of something similar I imagine there was once a group of retailers in Kerry Kerry who rejoiced when they managed to keep the warehouse out of the CBD. 
I wonder if they regret their actions now that Waipapa has become such a vibrant alternative retail hub. Retailers have always been concerned about the markets on the green, and past concerns have led to improvements in minute, Charles. market format. But we are concerned about the agenda and the mixed messages that have come through Rex and the petition. Rex's original approach to us was asking for us to pause the markets for 12 months and then have a review. Rex's letter now supporting the petition asks for a two year break. The petition itself has an indefinite cancellation of the markets, as does Craig Johnson's letter supporting the petition. Craig is a previous chair of Business Pie here and suggesting that uh, the collection of money for um, the ambassador program shouldn't be occurring seems a little bit strange given it happened when he was chair and it's actually an additional five dollars per stall for the ambassador scheme. The village green artisan market is a highly rating component of the Bay of Islands visitor experience. COVID has dealt a blow to many of the experiences enjoyed by cruise visitors in the past so much so that we are concerned about our ratings in the future as a port, and Wendy's talked about how important those ratings are. I implored, please don't make the market another one of these list of casualties. Thank you. Thank you, Charles. Um, interesting comments there. Now we have a question from Manawai, please. Oh, I'm sure you're all very sick of hearing me so far. <laughs> I know, I'm going to continue because we've still got speakers to go. Um, kia ora, Charles. Uh, uh, in um, the same way that I announced with, that I'd worked with Wendy, I have worked with Charles before when you were with Fuller's and I was with Kawata Cave, so I just wanted to clear that so everyone's aware. I know that that's part of the problem. We're a very small community, very well connected. Uh, I know that Irwin coordinates, um, Irwin Wilson coordinates these cruise ship meetings that we have in our community on behalf of Far North Holdings, but I did actually, in a previous application to the funding grant that we um, had purview over, I did see him as the treasurer for Focus Pi here. And if, treat me if that's wrong, but I think that's why it's important to announce these things because if people don't say it, they don't get a chance to um, understand just how connected we all are in these spaces, particularly with tourism. I wanted to thank you for your corridor. Um, I think what I'm hearing clearly is there is a disconnection between customer preference and whānau, hapu, iwi and community ratepayer resident preference. And this is an opportunity for us to find the space in between. So I really hope that moving forward, we do that. We actively pursue that. In a previous um, corridor that I shared with you around the CCTV um, camera application in the last meetings, it was there was a, a sentence in there about... Um, um, discouraging antisocial behaviour. Remember, I spoke about promoting positive social behaviour, and here's another opportunity to do that. The community is saying we want to talk, we want to be included, we want to be involved. What's our response to that? So I hope that from today, it's it's just not one of those conversations that can be shut down, and that it actually it looks as an opportunity to grow moving forward. And so I'll just reiterate, if we can look at building more partnerships with our community, particularly our mana whenua moving forward. It involves power sharing, and that's not something that's um, traditional in this space, power sharing with the community, responsibility sharing with the community. It is something new, but I hope we'll be brave and courageous. So thank you very much for coming, Charles, and sharing that corridor. Thanks, Mara. Okay, moving on, we have, now we have Marty. Are you there, Marty? Welcome, yeah. nice to see yeah. you. Yeah, kia ora Belinda, kia ora community board members, nice to see you all as well. Um, Just one moment, Joshna, we have your hand up. Um, did yes, you have Madam, a query? Yes, Madam Chair, just wanted to bring to your attention that you are at the discretion of hearing any further deputations on this issue if the speaker is going to be repeating views that have already been presented earlier. Thanks, Joshna. I'm quite happy to take three in uh, opposing the position, bearing in mind I allow Julie to speak on behalf of the um, stallholders. Thank you for pointing that out, understanding orders. Marty, the floor is yours for five minutes. Thank you, Belinda, and thank, thank you, community board members, for your, for your time. 
Um, apologies from Roger Dold. He's uh, more the business business brain in the, in the focus play here. Um, trust, but he he's away in Auckland at the moment, so I've been asked to step in and speak. Um, just the um, the benefits from from the markets is uh, spread over the whole of town. It's it's not just um, uh, Rex uh, mentioned it's focus play here, but actually focus play here is to the benefit of the whole of the community. I remember uh, when I first uh, got onto the community board, there were three disparate groups in Pai here. There was a citizens association, the business association, ratepayers and residents. And Focus Pai here is, is the, the brainchild of, of the, of the Pai here residents to be actually actually able to coordinate and bring the whole of uh, Pai here together to make Pai here a great place to live, play and um, visit and shop in. Um, the, the, Village Green is looked after by Focus Pie here, who and, and the the arrangement was that um, the that twenty percent of the income would go towards um, the would be for the benefit of Fine Earth District Council, who would then maintain the Village Green. Focus Pie here is uh, doing the maintenance, the upgrade, and as you can see in the surrounding township, is improving the whole of town as is a, a, a great place to visit. Uh, so we're we're doing that on behalf of both the Pahi residents, but also also the council, the community board. Um, so, if there are no markets on the village green, there would be no income to be able to do that, to do the maintenance, and also to share around the around the community. Uh, the if, if there are going to be uh, 49, sorry, no, there are going to be uh, 36 ships because 25% of the ships uh, coming in this this coming season is proposed there will be no market there. So there'll be approximately 36 ships um, with, the, with the Village Green market, uh, which by my estimation, there will be approximately 11 to 12,000 to be distributed to the community as a result of that. So the whole of community benefits. Uh, the the village market does make the town an attractive place to visit. So I'm just going to close um, with an analogy. Uh, so in empathising with Rex and with with all those shop owners that are suffering, the whole of the community is suffering as well. We haven't had any markets, so there has been no income to be able to progress and, and put towards the town. Uh, but with ships coming in, if there if there's not enough to attract them to come to Pai here, then uh, the only, there will only be a few shops that benefit. I, I liken it to a school fish, a, a school of fish coming through. If there are only two hooks in the water, you're only going to catch a couple of fish. But if there's more to attract the fish, then you're going to catch more. And I say to make the town an attractive place to visit is to keep the village green, uh, village green market. That's pretty well what I've got to say. Uh, are there any questions? Thanks, Martin. Did, um, uh, did I emphasize enough that that uh, we do maintain the village green and up upgrade it so you can see the results of what the income from the village green market has been? We're just cost effective to, to keep it in the community. What about localism, hey? Okay, any questions for Martin? No, I've got no kia ora, hands up I there. Just to say it's good to see you. That's all. Yeah, kia ora, Manawa. Thank you very much. And thank you for standing in um, for Roger today, Martin. Yeah. Okay, yeah. if there are no further questions, um, we will move on. That ends our deputations in relation to item 8.3, and we will discuss that later in the agenda when we get to that item. Thank you all. A lot to consider there. Right. Feel free to stay on or tune in. Um, it should be a short meeting today, fingers crossed. OK, so we um, now have a speaker to um, one of our funding applications. Do we have Caroline Armstrong with us, Joshna? Yes, we do. Hi, Caroline. Welcome, welcome, Caroline. 
You're here to speak to us uh, about a funding application today for the uh, Bay of Islands Arts Festival Trust, which is item 7.2, page uh, 40 in our agendas with additional information on page one. Thank you, Carolyn. Welcome. And Thank you, Madam Chairman. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yours. We can hear you clearly. Thank you. Perfect. Uh, kia ora tato. My name's Caroline Armstrong and I'm the co-director of Upsurge, the Bay of Islands Arts Festival, along with my husband, Dave. So we were appointed in 2019 to run the festival in 2021. Um, that didn't happen. It was pushed out until April 2022. And again, that didn't happen. Um, so we are now coming up. We are um, happening in September 18 to 25 this year. Um, so the focus on Upsurge is a seven day arts festival right around the region. And we're putting a focus this year on a lot of local um, interaction, local performers and working on projects with collaboration with a lot of local artists. Um, I, we all feel right now that our communities all need some beauty and joy <laughs> and some fun. Um, so over the week, there's about 25 ticketed events, plus we have a, um, a really established schools education program going into schools. Um, so that includes poet Glenn Colhoun, uh, novelist Dataria Sharman, um, Java Dance Company and Paul, uh, musician Paul Ubana Jones all going into schools and working. And they'll be working in places like, uh, like well, there'll be Kiri Kiri, Russell, Matari Bay, um, all around the region. We're trying to take out, out, while we've got the artists in the region, take them out to inspire and encourage young people in both primary and secondary schools. Um, Obviously, our festival relies heavily on box office income. Um, so ensuring that the festival is as visible as possible everywhere around the region is the basis of this application. Um, so we have a very extensive social media, press, radio um, campaign. Um, but we also know the value of walking past your local dairy or the local cafe and seeing a poster in the window picking up a brochure, something tactile that you can actually pick up and take home. Um, so we, we want to make it as, as visible as possible to all, all the communities in the region. Um, so that, that's pr pr basically the focus of this application. Um, so we're working out, because this is not about just marketing outside artists, this is about also marketing and supporting and encouraging local talent. Um, we've got some really lovely projects around the region. So we're working on one with Kiri Kiri Theatre Company and the Bay of Islands Vintage Railway in Kawakawa. Um, that will be a historic um, journey on the train with actors performing letters and uh, news reports and, and historic events of the history of the railway in the region. Um, we've got a lovely project in Haruru with three young local musicians who are all studying in Wellington, um, studying music and production in Wellington, and they're coming home to perform a coming home uh, performance for one night in Haruru. Uh, we've got a Toku Kainga, our project with local Tai Tamariki from 16 to 24 years old, and they'll be working with Jamie McCaskill and Regan Taylor from the Mari Side Steps and a director actress from Wellington, Carrie Green. And that project is for them, for young people in the region to work over three weekends to create their own stories about their place and where they come from. And that will result in a performance on the opening day of the festival. Um, so that could be spoken word, it could be a dramatic scene, it could be um, music. We don't quite know where that's gonna end up yet, <laughs> but it's very exciting. And then one of our main uh, focuses, one, one main focus is the uh, project with the Royal New Zealand Ballet. And this has taken us a long time to put together, but we are, the, the education team at the ballet are working over 10 weeks. In fact, Lauren, the dance educator is in a school right now. Um, and we're working with the Kura Kaupapa in Taumariri, Ora Mahoe School, 
Bay of Islands Academy and Kiri Kiri Primary School with 100 students. And then in the Turner Centre the, in the middle of our festival, there will be a performance where the first half is the Royal New Zealand Ballet Company and the second half is the children presenting their story um, with a little bit of interaction with the Royal New Zealand Ballet Company as well. So, um, so there's lots of stuff going on, but it is about getting the word out and making the brand and, and the festival as visible as possible. So I think that's me, because I could talk for 24 hours about the festival, um, <laughs> but I'm happy to answer any questions. Thanks, Carolyn. Now, do I have questions, Lane? Bruce, do you have any questions for Carolyn in relation to this? No? Uh, no, I just, I was just a little, um, not confused, but I see it's a uh, uh, PO box, Kerry Kerry, but then the physical address is actually Wellington. Is that? Kia ora is from that Wellington. Right? I'm sorry? Yes. Uh, so, no, Dave and I are based in Wellington, but okay. we've been up back, backwards and forwards many, many times and we'll be heading up there pretty soon for the um, to get the actual festival off the ground. Okay, thank you. Any further questions? No, I don't have any hands up there. Carolyn, mine was just in relation to you asking for, um, I see the four um, requests from your quotes on page 52 to 55 of our additional information. Um, just in relation to, so that's you're just requesting funding toward the um, printing of the brochure and the signage, is that correct? That's like yes. ban banners. And where will the banners... I know this sounds a bit stupid, but where will the banners be? Are they portable? Will they go from venue to yep. venue? Or they will, Yes, they will go I, from venue to venue and hopefully will be in the like information centre in the airport and then they will go from venue to venue and then we will also have posters and, um, and ho a core flute signs which will be somewhere near somewhere prominent. Um, our trust, our members of our trust board are responsible for actually putting them in place. So um, yeah, hopefully near busy traffic points. Thank you. And my other question was around, um, I noticed there was quite a, quite a reference to Kaikohi and, and uh, the, the Western area. Have you yes. applied to uh, the Kaikohi Hokianga Community Board for any funding or just to the Bay no, of Islands Whangaroa? Just, just to you. Just to just us, to this, okay. Yes. So it's predominantly held in this Eastern Ward Bay of Islands yes, area. Yes, and, and a lot of the activity with local participants is in that area as well. Yes, yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, Manawai. Kia ora. Sorry, I, I didn't ask Sina. I just wanted to reaffirm, you know, of your ticketed events, what's the price range for your ticketed events? Uh, okay, our top price is $44 and they go down to $15. Um, so most other festivals in the country, their average ticket price is between $49 and $59. So our events in the Turner Centre are $44. And then uh, Black Box Theatre, Duke of Balboa and Russell, they're, they're slightly lower. We also have um, two free community events that will be happening in Kaikoui and Kiri Kiri. Kia ora. Kia ora. And we've never worked together, Manawai. <laughs> yes, I, I, I probably had declared that. <laughs> 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 Thank you for saying. Kia ora. Thanks. Kia ora. Blaine. Yes. Your hands up. Oh, I'm sorry. I'll take my hand down. I oh, no question. <laughs> Bruce, no. Okay. No. Thank you, Carolyn. There's no further questions. So um, feel free to, to go off and enjoy your day or you can hang in for a little while. We'll be dealing with that very soon. Lovely. Thank you so much. Thank you. Kia ora. So with that, that actually wraps up our, our all our speakers for the day. And um, you will note that the Kaukaua Museum item 7.2 uh, will not be speaking to that. That item has been withdrawn from the agenda. So moving on, item 6.1. I will move that the Bay of Islands Whangarau Community Board confirm the minutes of the Bay of Islands Whangarau Community Board meeting held on the 7th of July 2022 are a true and correct record. Do I have a seconder? I'll Thank second you, Lane. Okay. 
put that to the vote. No amendments from those present? No, thank you. I'll put that to the vote. Thank you, Josh I'm in support. Aye. Aye. Chris. Aye. No talk all. Aye. <coughs> and that's carried. Thank you. We're now on to item 7.1, Chairperson and Members Report, that the Bay of Islands Whangarau Community Board note the reports from Chairperson Belinda Ward, Deputy Chair Frank Owen and Member Lane Eyre. Do I have a mover? I'll move. Thank you, Manawai. Seconder, Lane. Okay. Thank you. I'll take mine as read. Any questions? No. Moving on to Frank and his absence, we will take his as read. I just would like to note um, under his meetings there on the 7th of July, um, Frank was actually going to stand in to me. I was absent at a funeral for that council meeting. He was going to stand in for me and speak on our board report. He had to cancel at the last minute, so unfortunately um, couldn't make it uh, so that that meeting um, should be deleted. Uh, just to note all the uh, good work that he's doing in relation to Cherry Park House and um, I see they've had their AGM recently, which their minutes took were uh, very interesting to read. Uh, they seem to be running the facility um, along the lines more of our community hall policy, which is good to see. So we look forward to um, resolving the issues and health and safety problems and things that they have there that Frank's working on. Um, I noted, Lane, that they also had their calafont stolen. It seems to be a trend. There's obviously a lack of hot water around the district. <laughs> yeah, it's becoming popular targets, aren't they? Uh, uh, and Lane, your report, uh, apologies, this is the one that should have been in last month's agenda that we have carried forward. Um, the Disability Action Group have since actually um, Strategy and Policy had a meeting the other day and that draft policy has actually gone in front of council but has been left to lay on the table. I'm not sure if you were aware of that, but anything to speak to in your report? No, Madam Chairman, nothing uh, nothing of any substance. I, I record the domain moves on and um, there will be a blessing. Uh, unfortunately, I couldn't get it in this report, but I will notify the board when the next blessing is with regards to the playground. So should be in August, mid-August sometime. Excellent, and thank you for your continuing role there um, as chair of that domain um, committee. Um, it's exciting, exciting developments for Kitty Kitty. Okay, so with no further questions there, anything else for Lane? We will move on, put it to the vote. I'm in support. I am in support. I am in support. I total court. Hi from me. Thank you. That's carried. So now we move on to our funding applications. We only have three for today. Um, you'll note in the report it, it said that we had four. We now have three due to the withdrawal of the Kawakawa Museum application. So the total cost of the applications received is now $10,037 instead of $14,317. Um, I will move these separately. I'll put the report. I'll move that we receive the report. Do I have a seconder? Thank you, Lane. Yes. And we'll deal with the first application, which is for the Bay of Islands Whangarau Community Board approves a sum of $5,128 plus GST if applicable be paid from the board's community fund account to the Bay of Islands Arts Festival for cost towards the 2022-23 Arts Festival to meet the following community outcomes, communities that are healthy, safe, connected and sustainable, proud, vibrant communities. I have, I will move that. Do we have a seconder to get this on the I'll table? Thank Bruce. you, Bruce. Just 
discussion around this. You will see that they have actually um, asked us for $5,128. The total cost of this uh, festival is $23,450. You'll find uh, that item on page 40 with additional information on page one. Questions around this, discussion around this? Ms. Catherine, if you are still there, can I just ask you please in relation to the um, Events Investments Fund, at the time of writing this report they had not actually submitted. Can you inform us whether or not that has been submitted for hearing in the near future? For the next financial year, so for 23-24. Um, so, okay. yes, they have got an application in, but it's not for this event. Um, they do have $5,000 that they are carrying over that they were granted for when the event was initially going to go on yeah. ahead. So it's it's kind of confusing in there, but yes. yeah. Thank you. Thanks for clarifying that. Dave, you have a question? Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, just a reflection probably of, of looking at uh, our um, our preference for wanting to provide startup funding and what have you, and this has been a, a fairly established event, albeit rebranded. So I, I guess what I was most concerned was that um, that it needed to go on print resources and what where I tend to find that social media is, is definitely um, the way that most people are uh, keeping in touch with what's going on around the place and that. So I just sort of, I mean, it's 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 been a reflection on similar applications as well, where we have queried the the cost of going to print resources, which um, at the end of the day probably end up in the bin more often than not anyway. So I, 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 I'm not inclined to support this. I think that the, um, the trust is quite well funded um, and has good funds here to be able to cover this. So I guess I, I missed the opportunity to ask the question of um, what would happen if we didn't support the funding application and what would be the impact on that. Um, but uh, it doesn't cross my level for support, so I won't be supporting it. Thank you. Thanks, Dave. Any more comments, Lane, Bruce? Uh, your hands up. Yeah, Madam Chairman, I, I, Dave, you pricked my 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 conscience a bit there with your your comments because I think you're right. Uh, I, I guess if I was really being hard nosed, I would say I'd much prefer to see the five thousand go towards subsidising tickets for the youth of the area than on printed brochures. Um, I guess on the other side of the the equation, it is a well known event and goes on and provides some artistic input into the community. Um, but I certainly would have preferred that they sought funding for some different um, parts of the program. Does that, if that makes any sense. Thank you, Lane. Yes, and it does make perfect sense. I do note um, on page is it two, 11 in their additional information that there are some free tickets. I think it's to under fives. Um, sorry, I've just got a lot of paperwork here. Um, it does state in the some events are ticketed and some events are free. And there are, I did note somewhere there was free events. I think to lower socio communities, there was transport as well. Let's have a look here. Some free low ticket events to appeal for all ages and all sectors of the community, especially of those facing financial hardship on page 11. And I'm also bearing in mind they have had to um, reschedule this a couple of times in relation to obviously COVID. It was meant to take place. Um, when was it? April. No, it was April. She originally scheduled for April last year, but due to COVID, they've had to reschedule um, through to September this year, which we have seen with a lot of our major events funding as well. Uh, Lane, you've still got your hand up. More questions? Oh, I'm sorry, Madam Chairman. I, yeah. I, 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 there's not an indicator there to grab it down. I, I actually, having said that, though, I. I 
I will I will support this. However, for future, I would hope that they would apply for more appropriate areas of funding to apply it to. But anyway, thank you. They have actually applied for um, this under the advertising promotion. If you yeah. want to grant funding, you are more than welcome to suggest tagging it to any of the given costs on pages 44 and 45 if you're not comfortable with the um, predominantly, sorry, on page 44 of the agenda. Um, they have just targeted the marketing aspect of it, which um, is probably a common trend when coming to community grant funds to go for the marketing promotional side yeah. of it. Um, and saying that if they'd gone for facilitators fees and things, we would have said a big fat no. So yeah. um, if you want to take a minute, I'm happy for you to, to spend a minute just looking at page 44. Um, but they have actually gone for that amount under marketing of um, 5125 and it, we've got 5128 as a request for funding, probably just a typo there. There is social media in there, um, mm -hmm. Dave, of $1,500, an answer to that question. Um. I'm comfortable with the four quotes provided and the additional information. If there's no further discussion around this or, or you don't wish to uh, reword the recommendation, I'm quite happy to put this to the vote. I put it to the vote, Madam Chair. Okay, so moved by myself, seconded by Bruce, the sum of $5,128 be paid to the Bay of Islands Arts Festival for cost. Sorry, I'm echoing. Somebody might have to mute. Cost towards 2022-23 Arts Festival. I'm in support. Uh, I'm in support, Lane. I'm in support, Bruce. Yeah, I'm in support. And Dave? No, not from me. Opposed? Okay, thank you. Do you want it noted, Dave? It is anyway. Yeah, true, with division. Right, moving on, we have uh, the next application, which is for $2,909 plus GST if applicable, be paid to the Boards Community Grant Fund to the Bay of Islands Rotary Club for costs towards 2022 colour run. Do I have a mover? Yes, Bruce. Bruce, thank you. Seconder? I'll or second. second. Lane, okay. Yeah, Thank you. To get this on the table for discussion. So, page 49, um, with additional information on page 56. They've applied for 2,909. The total cost of this event is actually 7,747. Discussion around this. This I don't recall Rotary actually um, hosting this event in the past. It may be that this is their inaugural hosting. Certainly not the inaugural event that I'm aware of. Uh, this is to be held October 22nd. I haven't looked at my calendar, but I'm assuming that's over Labor Weekend. Would be close anyway. Yes, that's Labor Weekend Saturday. Thanks, Catherine. Anything you need to add to this? Would like to add to this? Happy to answer any questions if anyone has any. Okay. It looks like they were successful in uh, in receiving funding for their PA system, which was uh, one of their expenses. If you see over on page 52, um, they received funding for that $338. However, they are not actually asking us to contribute towards that. Uh, I haven't asked them to speak to it due to the fact that it was under the $3,000 limit, so I'm not in a position to answer a lot of curly questions. Dave. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, just in reflection of page 57, um, with the costs for the entry for $140 for a family, $60 for an adult, $45 for a student and a child at $40, I'm not quite sure why um, we're being approached for money. It's quite a lot of money that they're charging for the entry, and I would have thought that should be 
um, self-funding for this, so I'm not in support of it. Thank you. Any more questions, comments? Oh, Bruce. I'd like to speak. I just think it's uh, a good fun activity, family activity. Okay, this costs a lot of money as far as the entry goes, which I'm cringing a bit at. But um, it's good to see some colour coming into the uh, into the bay, and I'd like to support it. Thanks, Bruce. Yes, if, if you've actually seen it, it's quite hilarious that the, the, the no, family imagine, the family costumes and the team costumes. Um, the the honestly, the initiative and creativity that goes in, into those is well worth coming down to have a look at. Manawai. I'll find it. Kilda. Um, I've had Fano, quite a few Fano participate this, in this in the past and have really enjoyed it. And a lot of it's one of the few activities you see parents with their children being able to participate, teenagers in particular. And um, and so I've seen the appeal to Fano. The money, the price is really high, especially for uh, the current COVID climate. So that would be my one hesitation. But given that it is is under 3000 um quite keen to support this guy, Baba. Thanks, Manawai. And I just want to point out the money that goes back into the community from Rotary and their additional information, which is on page 56, if you wanted to take a minute to peruse that. Um, I did note the good that uh, Rotary does, the money that they put back into the community, particularly into schools and the youth. Yeah. Any more discussion around this? If not, I'll put it to the vote. Okay. Thank you, Joshna. Moved by Bruce, seconded by myself. I'm in support. I'm in support. I'm in support. All right, total court. No from me. Thanks, Dave. So that's carried. And our final one uh, is for $2,000. This is from our Kitty Kitty Community Trust. $2,000 uh, for our Kitty Kitty Community Trust towards the Northland Chess Championships. Do I have a mover? I'll move this to get it on the table. Seconder? Yep, I'll second it. Thank you, Dave. Discussion around this, you'll note this is a free event um, and they are asking us for under 50%. The total cost of the event is $5,801 and they're asking for $2,000. Um, and they will be bringing buses, I note, um, to and from Kaitaia to allow participant, participants uh, from across the district. And I think I read somewhere where it was stopping in Ohio. So much information with that one, that I can't correct. recall. Is that correct, Catherine? That is correct. Dave. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I'm going to support this one. Um, I, I think the fact that it's a free event and that they're going to provide some transport and what have you, and it's also an inaugural one. So um, it's not been all doom and gloom with um, funding applications today, but, you know, I'm mindful that we've got another, uh, you know, the rest of the year ahead. And, um, you know, I've, I've always been trying to be consistent around what, I, what I've supported in that. So, um, yeah, good on them for getting something that's a little bit out of the out of the normal and, and away just from a, a sporting event as such to something that's a little bit more intellectual. So, um, yeah, my support. It is a sport, isn't it? I don't know. Lane. <laughs> um, yeah, Madam Chairman, <laughs> two things. First of all, I will support it in the absolute spirit of diversity because we support vast numbers of things and I think a chess tournament while while intellectually I may not participate um, I think it's a good thing and, but secondly um, if I may just direct a quick comment to Dave uh, Dave you, your your um, hesitance on a couple of our previous ones are well noted and and as far as I'm concerned right on, I, I mean I'm a lot of my decisions are not 100% uh, one way or the other. They are 49 51. 
And so there may only be two degrees separating us on some of those votes. Thank you. Thanks, Lane. And God forbid if we all agreed. No ah. way. <laughs> Hand down, up. Yeah, kia ora. I like this. I like this. I, I agree with the comments of um, our previous members. It, this is a. This looks like a good event for Farno as well, and um, and I also agree with what Lane just said. I think that one of the things that um, Dave's raised is is just is around consistency. He's raised it consistently, and I I don't. I, th I think we when our next board comes in, that really needs to be seriously looked at because we've struggled with that in the last year, especially. And um, having some kind of framework in place will help our board be a bit more proactive instead of reactive moving forward, is my perception. Kia ora. Kia ora. So let's tick those boxes. I'm in support. Yep. Yes. All right, total call. Yep, 100% from me. It's carried, thank you. Now uh, we're going to move to item 7.3. Recommendation that the Bay of Islands Whangarau Community Board note the project report C from Northland Community Family Services, which has, oh, well, I'll just move that family services. Do I have a seconder? Thank you, Lane and you will note in page 153 of our additional information right at the very end, we do have some financial information there. Catherine, just an update before we put this to the vote. Do we actually have had any correspondence with regard to um, Te Rua Pika Pika Trust and the additional information we requested? Nope, nothing okay. yet. I am, I am still poking every so often. Um, I've been told that she has been incredibly busy with the COVID response and work that Natahini is doing, but I am still trying to get any response whatsoever out of them at the moment. So, yeah. okay. through the chair, um, yes, I, I've got a feeling that's coming. I am slowly working on it. She is very busy. We're, we're talking about Rowena, but uh, yeah. I, think, I think it's coming. Thank you, Manawai. <laughs> okay, so um, I move this report. Port Lane seconded it. I'm in support. Thank you. Yes, Madam Chairman. Yes, Bruce. Aye, total court. That's carried. Yes. And yes from me. Oh, sorry, Dave. Carry. Right, moving on. Item 8.1, we have an information report here, compacted for public rubbish disposal. That the Bay of Islands Whangarau Community Board received receive the report compactor for public rubbish disposal. Do I have a mover? Yes. Bruce, thank you. Seconder. Oh, second. Good on thank the you, table. Lane. This is an information report. Any discussion around this? Do we have the report writer with us, Simon? Yes, I'm here. If you want to ask some questions. Oh, hi, Simon. Chair. Thanks. Simon. Rubbish, eh? An ongoing problem. No easy answers. Um, the only thing I ask in the absence of member um, Manuela Gmurho now, who offered um, a trial site in Russell in relation to dis discussions about um, rubbish. Uh, anything that's going to be done over there, I note on page 81 of the printed agenda, um, Northland Waste have actually given an indicative price on of a cost of $520 there to hook the uh, truck uh, from the depot up. And there was also additional disposal costs there. Um, if that offer uh, stands to, uh, within the community to trial something over there, can I please um, stipulate that you liaise with Manuela as to the location? There was discussion around a location which the community was um, strongly against. So just if anything is going to be done, it would be great to, to trial something over there uh, for the summer. But if it's going to happen, can you please liaise so that you get it in the correct location from the community perspective, Simon? Thanks. 
uh, Madam Chair, um, at this stage, there is no budget or no plan to set up one of these things. Um, the brief I get I had was fairly general, just write a report on the general um, operation of those um, uh, units. The council, the councils that I've talked to haven't had a lot of success with them, unfortunately. Um, yeah, I mean, essentially, we're trying, you know, they're a proposal to try to eat, reduce the cost to council and the visual impact of um, illegal dumping. Um, and they haven't worked particularly well at other councils, unfortunately. The cost is that cost um, was just the empty cost. The main cost involved in these things is one, the upfront capital cost, which as it outlines there, about $61,000 um, ballpark. Um, and today's markets and metal prices that may change. The other thing is the servicing cost. One of the uh, main problems with these machines on the assumption that people actually want to use them correctly and pay for their rubbish um, is that they jam up often and there's high cost sending um, the, the chute that you drop the rubbish through. People tend to put, well, try to get their $3 worth basically and put all sorts of material in there which jams up the chute. Um, and one of the major operational costs is the um, sending out technicians to yeah, um, yeah. service them. That servicing cost to empty them is also relatively high um, compared to, say, what we're paying at the moment for recreational services just to pick up bags of rubber because a specialist truck is required and the truck's got to go all the way from Waipapa to, if it was going to be at Russell, for example, mm. it's got to go out from Waipapa to Russell, drop it off the transfer um, station and then back to Waipapa, which, yeah, is um, fairly expensive. Mm. So at this stage, the report's just information only. Okay. Thank you. I do have Member Hookway with his hand up, but just before we go to you, Dave, um, can you follow up for this summer, please, Simon, in relation to the rubbish issue with Far North Holdings on the Russell Wharf? Um, the last couple of times we've had meetings over there, we've noticed quite a lot of rubbish dumped beside the bins on the wharf. There seems to be an ongoing problem all year round. It's not just a summer issue. So um, if you could follow up with, with Chris or somebody on that, that would be great. Um, it just seems to be something that, that Manuel is receiving ongoing complaints about, and we have witnessed it. It's not something that's going away. So we need to find a resolve for that for the summer. Dave. Yeah, kia ora, Simon. Thanks for coming along and um, presenting to us. Um, not a lot for us to, to do today, but I'm intrigued just to know whether we're actually capturing the sites where um, rubbish is a problem and uh, perhaps as an annual basis and then as a seasonal basis. I mean, most of us would be quite familiar, as Belinda's already said, that you know we we know at certain times of the year, whether it's maybe Stone Store Basin or um, other other localities that are uh, with the influx of um, holiday makers and and that that um, rubbish tends to accumulate at certain points. So, has have you been able to, or have your staff been able to do analysis of where there's a need or that these might be useful at? Um. To answer the chair, um, we haven't done an analysis of that. Um, I personally don't believe, and neither do the other solid waste officers I've talked to and other councils, that these are the solution because they're expensive. Um, they don't solve the problem, um, the unsightliness, or the two main problems are the unsightliness of the legal dumping and the cost of removing it. These don't seem to address either issues. Currently, although I don't look after the public litter bin um, emptying contracts, I am aware that over the Christmas period um, that the they have extra serves of the public litter bins to try to keep on top of it. This is probably the cheapest way to, uh, to do this. Um, yeah, in my mind, I, I don't know anywhere one of these bins would be suitable off the top of my head, largely because they haven't had a lot of success in other um, districts. So other council staff and other districts haven't been able to recommend. Frankly, they just they're an expensive way of of trying to get people to pay for rubbish. Um, as I've said in the report, we have tried this approach in mm. the past, uh, not with such a flash, you know, solar powered compacting machine, but basically coin operated drop off. Um, didn't get a good result. My view is that this overall illegal dumping issue, there is no simple solution. It should be covered in the overall review of our solid waste plan early next summer um, and try to look at a, a, a solution to this problem as part of the big uh, solid waste plan. In the meantime, I think probably the most practical and um, 
cheapest option is just to continue getting recreational services to drop off, um, pick up those bags of rubbish um, as they are dropped off. I am in contact and discussion with Chris from Far North Holdings over um, issues for the Russell Wharf. Um, and the suggestion there at the moment is getting the Russell uh, Russell Radio have an office nearby to offer a, a service that boaties can drop off rubbish to them at a, at a cost. Whether that's going to get over the line or not um, remains to be seen. Thanks, Simon, and, and thanks for informing us of that initiative. Dave, you've got another question for Simon? Yeah, no, I just didn't quite answer it because I wasn't really seeking to inform the use of this one, but recognising that people dump their rubbish because they don't want to pay or because it's a uh, because of the problem of, of that, uh, of having to go to somewhere to do that. So probably what I was looking at was whether it would be more uh, cost efficient just for us to be able to put a, um, a skip bin or something in certain locations at certain times times of the year than actually paying additional stuff to rec services or what have you to be able to empty it. Hence why I asked, have we identified where the pinch points are in a, in a perhaps from a, a seasonal perspective um, to be able to reduce the impact on the environment? Just to talk through that uh, through the chair, uh, Madam Chair, um, in the past, Far North Holdings did provide rubbish skips at wharfs, um, et cetera, and some of these problem points. The issue with that, as soon as you put a rubbish skip there and the locals see that the boaties or the fishermen are getting free rubbish disposal, the a volume of rubbish just goes through the roof. The one, I haven't got the figures, I mean the Far North Holdings figures, but the Totra North is one area that I was very aware of where they had a, a skip there and the entire community used it on the basis that, hey, look, these people are getting free rubbish disposal, why aren't we? Um, and yeah, so the establishment of those skips becomes, yeah, if we got the same amount of rubbish, it may be a better way, um, but the rubbish volumes just increase dramatically. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm afraid. Yeah, thanks, Simon. And, and yes, and the location of those skips is um, obviously an issue within our communities as well. Mm. We get we get the fallout from the, loc the placement of them, but um, thank you for that. So. It, in the interest of time, we'll move on. I've uh, moved by Bruce Mills, um, seconded by Lane Eyre. I'll put that to the vote. I'm in support. I'm in support. I'm in support. Total call. Yes, for me. Thank you, Simon. That's carried. Thank you, Simon, for attending, and I'm sure we'll be in touch. Very good. Thank you. Now we're up to item eight. Point two, that the Bay of Islands Whangarau Community Board received the report funding granted by the Bay of Islands Whangarau Community Board 2016 to 2022 financial years. Do I have a mover? Thanks, Bruce. Seconder? I'll second. Thanks, Manawai. We've had a part discussion around this. Any further discussion? Happy with the information that's gone into the public arena that you requested? Yes, thank you. Very happy. Madam, Madam Chairman, just, just a small notation. If, yes. if, we're, if we are accumulating data, um, and I'm not quite sure of why we wanted to accumulate it, but if we were going to make it more relevant, it seems to me that we should be noting populations of the various areas um, so that... Uh, a comparison can be made by by rate payer or resident. Um, there are other items that if I was doing it, I would include, but I think that's the basic that we should have as population of the various wards. Thanks, uh, Lane. And Catherine, you might like to speak to that. Um, no? <laughs> I think there is some work being done in the Kitty Kitty community lane um, yeah. at the moment around um, some of those um, critical partner groups in the community yeah. are looking at um, population areas and numbers and things. So perhaps, Catherine, we can, um, you know, feed into that and, and get some information out that could accompany some of this decision making in the future. Right. That would be great, Lane. Yes, yeah, no, it was just outside yeah, of what I was yeah. looking at. Yes, yes, I appreciate that. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, that wasn't wasn't your brief, but maybe in the future it could be. Manawai? No, by the, the the fact that we name 
particular areas, we are making geographical allocations. Yes. And if we're going to make geographical allocations, they, they should be as descriptive as possible. And, and the next step down would, of course, be population. Thanks, Thank Lane. You. Yeah, I've noted that. Thank you. Manawai? Kia ora. I, I know that with three boards in our district, we the nature of our mahi is geographical. So great comments, and I think what this was was to start a discourse and discussion around how we're doing the things that we do. So I think that's an important thing to note, and also some of the other things that are important to our community's identity. It's achieved exactly what um, our community were asking for. People in our community were just wanting the list and, um, and curious to learn more, which is always a great thing. 50% of our community is Māori. And so, and they're disconnected from local government. It's things like this that can sometimes open those doors to connection. Kia ora. Thanks, Manawai, Dave. Uh, yeah, kia ora, thank you. Um, just probably in response to Lane's request, if I look at our strategic report, which um, you'll have got my feedback on, if it's in your inbox here, um, I do note that it, it distinguishes between equality and equity. And so um, the fact that, that we might have numbers in, in each ward doesn't necessarily uh, relate to a dollar per head of population um, for that. Um, if we're to, uh, to redress inequity issues, um, but in, in, in terms of, of moving forward, I just again want to reiterate, and it's better to adopt that now if we can look at um, amending our application forms to um, perhaps allow the applicants first off to identify which well-being their funding application is going to be largely addressing so that we're able to do analysis um, moving forward as part of that data capture to to look at whether we're, you know, what areas that are underperforming uh, or ones that are getting preferential treatment. I don't think that's too hard. Um, but anyway, that's that's just my 10 cents worth. Thank you. Thank you, Dave. And I just want to thank Catherine for the compilation of that data. Certainly um, a real time saving exercise um, for board members not having to go back and go through all of those. We could have quite easily done our own lists, but it would have taken a long time. So moved by Bruce, seconded by Manawai. I'm in support. Lane, you're muted. Bruce and Lane both in support. All right, total walk. Yes, from me. Thank you, that's carried. Now I'm mindful we've been sitting for um, nearly two hours 20 and I'm also mindful that a couple of you have other appointments and I would like to keep a quorum and get through this agenda. Would you like to take a five minute comfort break to enable us to get through this agenda by one o'clock or would you prefer 10 minutes till 12.30? Five minutes from me, Madam Chairman. Five minutes, okay. Five minutes. We'll break for five minutes. Thank you, Joshna. We'll have a comfort break and we'll come straight back and finish off these last two items. Thank you.
welcome, welcome back and thank you um, to those of you who are still hanging in there listening to us and watching us live streaming for your patience. Uh, we just needed to have a comfort stop there. So now we're up to item 8.3, which is the um, petition for the Paihe cruise ship market. And we have a recommendation here that the Bay of Islands Whangarau Community Board formally receive the petition from Rex Wilson on behalf of all signatories on the petition and determine an outcome that meet the following community outcomes. Communities that are healthy, safe, connected and sustainable and proud by vibrant communities. Do I have a mover? Get this on the table for discussion. You're muted, okay. Lane. Yep. Yeah. I will. Dave, yeah. uh, seconder. I'll second it, Madam Chairman. Thank you, Lane. Now we've heard from a number of people today, and as you can imagine, I've heard from a number of people in the community and on the streets. <laughs> so there's uh, obviously a lot of discussion and collective discussion needing to take place around this topic. Lane. Madam Chairman, just to um, clear my own mind and, and, and maybe, it seems to me that there's one or two items being sort of cobbled together here. Um, if we're talking about the Village Green, if, if I'm not mistaken, that has been delegated to uh, Focus Pie here uh, from the Council. Uh, whether it should have been or shouldn't be is 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 not on the table for us to discuss at the moment. But however, it appears that if the the market takes place on that location, and I'm not quite sure how we get to make a decision about something that's effectively been taken out of our hands. I, I, I'll preface my remarks by saying I'm highly sympathetic to the petitioners in this particular instance. Um, there's a lot of other things thrown into the uh, the pot, if you will, but I think in its raw term, you've got somebody that's paying rates and taxes for 52 weeks a year, who are then, when there's a chance to make a few extra bucks, is given additional competition that doesn't have that. Is I, I'm very sympathetic to that position. However, if the Village Green is not our delegation at this time, I, I fail to see what we can do. There was then again the second discussion with regards to cruise ships. Everybody seemed to be an expert on cruise ships. Um, you'll note that some years ago, I undertook a bit of a study of cruise ships, um, given my, my tenure as uh, on the Visitors Bureau in Auckland, in my term at the AOT Centre, we were involved. And it, it becomes abundantly clear that there is a lot of money made by cruise ships. However, the money does not necessarily disseminate itself to all the communities. And, that, and that's very true here. Um, we, we use buses to transport uh, cruise ship people around. Um, there is uh, money to be made by the people booking the buses. Um, in some cases, though, I'm not sure that there's a lot of employment or gainful employment that's created. So I, I'm, I'm a bit confused about what we're going to do. <laughs> Or what we're asked to do. Thanks, and I hope maybe, that you yeah. can clarify my confusion. <laughs> Thank you, Lane. I will try my best to. I am foreshadowing an amendment at this point to um, the resolution. I there there is a lot of confusion, and I would like to start by saying, um, well, by thanking all those that. Um, the, the petition, I think, has its place. I think it's really good that, that that Rex has been brave and stood up and done this. It's not an easy thing to do. And it's not an easy thing to get people to speak up in support of you when you are opposing something. So I um, just want to acknowledge that from a community perspective and all of those that have signed the petition and for whatever reason and feel that that they that their voice needs to be heard. Um, I, I sympathise also with, with Focus Pyhack because they are doing a fabulous job. Uh, the community board delegated their delegation of the reserve to Focus Pie here, who have since entered into an agreement with council and they lay part of the problem from um, the community perspective and from where I sit as the local, in my governance role as the local community board um, subdivision representative. 
the information, um, the agreement incidentally between focus and council is not in the report, uh, which I expected to see it. Um, along with a list of fees and charges and any relevant information that would relate to a management plan. So um, we, we're not fully informed here by any means in this report, but there is, and I thank Joshna for the amount of information that she was able to uh, provide to me through council um, at probably what was considered reasonably short notice, um, bearing in mind it had to be dug out. I have a number of questions here, which I don't believe this is the forum for. I think we need to um, to get together as a community uh, with the community groups and decide uh, of a, a way forward. There is an agreement on the table between Focus and Pay here, and that agreement obviously has standing. If Focus Pay here chose or offered to revoke or um, withdraw that agreement for the season, that is entirely up to them and between them and council. I think if council were to uh, cancel the agreement going into a summer season, um, then that could be troublesome for council and, and costly for the ratepayer if it were to end up in any form of litigation. So we do have responsibilities, but we do have an interest and um, it is still our delegation. Uh, the fact that we further delegated it, we could also in turn recommend to council that we would like to revoke our delegation to Focus Pay here. So there is a lot to be sorted out here um, and a lot of information that we need to be provided with. I think the guidelines for the um, Focus Pay here Village Green Craft Market probably need uh, addressing on a number of fronts. Um, I think there's quite a few points that were brought up um, by all speakers today actually that need to be addressed both for and against. So it comes down to local and it comes down to, to the town and, and the overall um, feelings, sentiments and impacts. Um, and it's not just the retailers that, that object to the craft market on various days. I, some things have come out here that, that need clarification. Um, who are the, the retailer representatives? Um, uh, whether the um, neighbouring um, properties have been consulted with. There isn't a reserve management plan. That would be my first priority. The the, manage, the village green management plan is very dated. It's not a reserve plan. And that would be um, for the first job to do to tidy things up would be to work on getting a reserve management plan in place that, that gave direction and all of those things that Ross threw at us this morning to consider in our decision making processes um, on all our reserves, not just the pie here, village green. Um, it is green open space. There are no permanent structures on there. So we, we are very blessed that we do have the use of that grassed area for the bulk of the year. However, there's questions to be answered in relation to the, um, the cash flow and the um, reporting that focus do to council is not being fully reported to the community board. And we should be in the loop, even though that delegation has been um, handed to focus pie here. So I'm happy to, um, Lane, does that answer your queries around the the untidy um, aspect? I mean, reserves sit with us. The fact that we have agreed to delegate the operational side of it to focus pie here, it used to be with the information centre. Originally it was with the hall committee. So it's got quite a history. Um, there are issues around it that need clarification. I, I think, quite frankly, Madam Chairman, I think it raises more questions for me than it does possibly answer anything. <laughs> I would add something more to my, which I think pervades a lot of what we do, not just this. It's the fact that we're using public land. It's the same with, uh, what's the most recent example, where we were talking of fresco dining. It's where people are getting a commercial advantage using public space. If the, there's a market here in Kirikiri that takes place on private land and there's a market and nobody's got a beef or anything else with it. But I can see the one of the underlying problems here is we are using public space for effectively for competition. 
and that needs to be addressed. But I mean, yes. I, I don't mind. I don't mind where the delegation sits. If it currently sits with with uh, uh, focus pie here, then the first question would have to be: Is that delegation revoked? in any way, shape or form, and then we could participate on a discussion. But before that's done, I don't think we've got a leg to stand on. Sorry. <laughs> Thanks, Lane. And um, because we don't have a copy of the agree agreement in the report, I'm not sure when it is up for review or how often it is reviewed. In the past, the Community Board has been given information um, submitted um, from Focus Pi here to Council in our agendas, and I have actually seen these guidelines before, some of this information. Um, I was there sadly back in the day when the original Paihe Village Green Management Plan was written in 1999. And um, it was quite fit for purpose at the time, believe it or not. <laughs> it's extremely bad, it's a, it's a pretty poor document. So um, yes, a, a reserved management plan, um, as we do with some of our other reserves, would give some some pretty clear guidelines with the community's views as to how that, that recreational reserve should be used. So I feel there's some things that perhaps could be addressed before the summer season, bearing in mind um, focus pay here are already in there. If you've read the report, you'll see they're already, uh, they've already surpassed their, their expression of interest time frame, May to July, I think it was the cutoff point for, for stall holders wanting to use the green. So there is some um, probably people waiting, particularly the, the craft market users will be waiting and hanging in limbo to see whether or not they actually are going to be able to use the village green and participate in the summer season. So some discussion needs to be had uh, amongst the, the various parties as, as soon as possible. And I'm quite happy um, to organise the um, the various groups and and meet, uh, of course, with council staff present um, at at present. Focus are reporting to them, and um, there are a number of questions that council um, should be able to answer um, on our behalf. Um, so that we have more information for the community. But we definitely have, I think there's some things that can be addressed, you know, fairly smartly to compromise the situation if the agreement goes ahead that stands at the moment. And that is around, there's a lot of talk around local and, and the local people and, and local product. And there's concern around the area that the sellers come from. And I think that um, I did hear somebody say that 20 years ago they came, they were from the Bay of Islands area. Well, actually, in the oldest report we've got in here, I think they were from Walkworth North in the original um, Village Green plan, which is, I don't know how on earth we came up with, that, with that, that boundary at that time. So we have moved on and we need to readdress the things. Manawai. Uh, oh, yeah. Sorry, I did. Um, I just I, I saw this as such an opportunity for information sharing and inclusion in the conversation. It sounded like so many people are left out of receiving that key information of what the reality is around cruise ship market, only because they get mentioning it. Both sides who were for or against the petition get mentioning the cruise ship market. So I think it's a bugbear for them, that particular instance in these market presentations. And I think people are feeling left out of the loop in terms of what the what the details are about who is coming. You know, I heard Wendy say, oh, it's a, this many million, these many people. Where is the information that I can point to and have reference that that is actually having an impact on the ground. You know, these numbers are great, but no one's presenting this in a way that um, the people, the ratepayers, residents, communities, whānau, hapu, iwi can actually understand it, receive it and do something with it that's going to help them work together. It's a lot of disconnection. And um, I, I just think there's a perception that they feel like the people who have the information aren't sharing it. And this is one of the frustrations that can come through. So there's an opportunity for more information sharing. We should be encouraging that. But I also agree with what everyone else has said about whether or not this is what we should be dealing with, given Focus Pie here's relationship with Far North District Council. Okay. 
I'm going to um, to put an, an amendment to this recommendation and add a C uh, that member ward meet with the with council staff, focus pay here, and community groups to further discuss and resolve the issues at hand. Madam Chairman, would you consider taking <coughs> out B altogether? <laughs> I'm quite happy to receive the report, but yes, I, I did look. I, it's funny I looked at that because it, it's quite loose. But then at the end of the day, everyone wants the vibrancy in the communities. Everyone wants to feel proud of it. Um, I, 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 it's, it's, I have no, I have no issue with vibrancy and and, yes. and all those other wonderful words. But it, the word determine an outcome somehow or other that implies that we as a board are going to be able to determine an outcome. And happy, I don't believe we can. Happy we, to... Know, it's like saying you dig a hole, but someone else has got the shovel. Um, it just <laughs> it just doesn't work. Um, I'm quite... I, I received the report, um, and I'm quite happy for you as the local uh, representative for that ward to try and sort something out. But we, but we as a community board, we... I don't see what we can do. Agree. Uh, unless you want to make part of that renegotiating the the, yes. um, the yeah, delegation of, of, of the facility. This will have to come back to the board lane. It, yeah. it will, um, no matter what happens, even if there is um, alterations um, at this stage. But I'm aware that there is, a, is an agreement and therefore we have to work on what we've got in place at the moment and start the discussions. Um, it won't be fixed overnight, but at least we can get wheels in motion to actually, there's a number of issues at stake here, and I think we have to start at the beginning and we have to start at, at the, the classification of the reserve and getting, we start finding a, a budget and, um, and work on um, getting, prioritising that for a proper reserve management plan over the, over the land. And, yep. um, that's the start of it from from the board perspective, but in the meantime, focus are continuing to manage that site on behalf of us, and they have an agreement in place with the council. So once we get all the detail of that and when it's able to be reviewed, it's not going to happen overnight. Um, it's just it's there's a lot of untidiness that needs to be sorted. So I'm happy to remove B. I don't I don't have an issue with it. I just feel that we need to. Um, to keep this discussion rolling, that the petitions brought it to our attention. Uh, if we accept that petition, if we formally receive that, then we need we need to act accordingly and um, and bring the parties together. And and that is that is all community groups, not just the petition writer and focus pie here and business pie here. There are representatives of of all community groups, and I think it needs to start with the conversation between myself and council to find out what information focus are supplying them and what they can supply us with, and that will be the foundation of what we start working on. Ma Madam, Madam Chairman, I'm, I I'm happy to to that we pass a resolution delegating you to deal with council to clean up this yes. delegation. How's Run that? away. Thank um, you, Lane. Somewhere in the wording, should we should we put it as the Pi here subdivision representative supported by the cruise ship committee, the board cruise ship committee delegate? Just because I'm mindful there's two more months left. And this is an issue that might extend beyond those two months and we may not be here next. Well, I, I know I won't be. Yeah, I have just put that. I have just put that member ward. So it, that is me as a subdivision representative. If you want to add to that, well, um, well, currently that, we are. I'm just mindful of the time yes. frame. Is that um, it, you? You are the subdivision representative where it's involved in this matter. So it might be. Um, so say mm. none of us get back mm. in in the next election. Where does that leave them? Yes, it so, would be so the role of the Paihia division, a Paihia yeah. subdivision member. So maybe that I'm just suggesting that that we, be included in the in, in the, the amendment. Discussion. Okay, so yeah. they're not happy, left high and dry. Happy to do that. Um, I also would would um, would like to feel that we've made 
a lot of traction by October. <laughs> the ships will be coming in and um, this needs to be decided um, ASAP. We can't have a community up in arms or, or divided or, you know, we, we need to sort it and we need to all be happy chappies. And it might mean that next summer we have all our ducks in a row, but at least things could be amended um, and there could be some compromise on both sides or all sides. Um, for this summer season. So I do intend to move quickly, but point taken. So I have that that member ward Paihe subdivision community board representative. Do you want me to add this in as C? We're going to delete B. Or we're deleting we, B. Lane wants to delete B. Oh, I'm happy to I'm, delete Madam B. Madam Chairman, I'm, I'm, it's your I'm motion. Quite happy if, if you want to keep B in, it just seems to me yeah. that determine an outcome I guess I guess we'd all like to think that we are going to determine an outcome, but well, I think the determination. If you want to leave it in there, I'm fine. I I, yeah. I agree. So. I think the determination actually relates to having communities that are healthy, safe, connected, and sustainable, and proud, vibrant communities. And I'm I feel that that's what we are trying to achieve. So I'm happy to leave it in there. Can I can I just make one thing? We should separate the use of this area this green um, this delegation for this reserve from from the activity of cruise scripts cruise ships is one activity of of this interaction it, it, it it's just a it's a commercial activity is that the only commercial activity we're dealing with it's not though the only commercial activity no, on the village no, green so sorry. that will be addressed in a reserve management plan yeah. when it's done yeah so, um, so I'm happy to leave that in line and just add a C that member ward Paihe subdivision community board representative meets with council staff. Paihe ward subdivision representative meets meets with council staff. Focus Paihe. and community groups, because I would like to ensure that we have identified all interested parties there. Tanya Tafinua, Mana Finua and community groups. What was that, Manawai? Um, Mana, Finua, Mana Finua and community groups. Can you I would cut me. Manu. Mana, oh sorry, Mana Finua. It's, I'm guessing it's W H E N U A. M A N A W H E N U A. Is this right? M A N A? Yes, looks okay. great. May I ask what is Manu Finua? Uh, tangata Finua of that particular area. So, uh, Tangata Whenua often refers to the any whānau Māori who are from across different parts of Aotearoa. Mana Whenua are the particular people of that area. Okay. Member Ward Pai Award Subdivision Representative. Meets with um, Council staff, Focus Pai here. Mana Whenua and community groups meets with council staff focus pay and phone. Yep. Ward? There's no there's no ward. Pay here is just a subdivision area. It's not a ward, so it's take that second ward out. I know it's <laughs> believe you me, when I was nursing it was a lot of fun too. Member, Member ward, pay here subdivision <laughs> representative. <laughs> Meets with council staff, focus pay here, mana whenua, and community groups to discuss and resolve the pay here village green issues. This is not just about cruise ships. I don't know. Okay, so I've put that amendment. Just read that out. Member Ward Paihe Subdivision Representative meets with council staff, Focus Paihe, Mana Whenua and community groups to discuss and resolve the Paihe Village Green issues. 
Do I have a seconder? I'll second. Thanks, Mana Y. So I'm going to put the amendment. Can you, Any... can you just have a, can we just have a word before you do? Otherwise, I'm going to vote against it. Um, yep. So I, I'm just, I'm, I'm a little bit unclear of the process. So you're going to resolve it and that won't happen because you've said this is going to come back to the community board. So what I would have liked to see is a recommendation come back to the community board or something in the wording of that rather than that it's left for you to resolve it solely. So what will happen, Dave, is, is it's so piecemeal. The reserve management plan will have to be done, which will come back to the board. And that's going to take time. We don't have time on our side because we're looking at a cruise ship season starting in a couple of months' time. So I need to sit down around the table. Focus Pay have an agreement. I don't know when that expires, but if it's due to be reviewed, it will come to the board. If it's not due to be reviewed, then we have to look at compromises over the next two months for this cruise ship season and the use of the green for the season. We've got the IT Festival coming up uh, early October, which uses the whole Village Green, which is Business Paihe's main fundraiser event. We don't know what other events um, are going to be applied for. We have the farmers markets that operate there on a Thursday. We have other activities that take place on the green. We have the... Uh, yeah, so, so if you want everything to come back to the board, I don't think it's going to be physically possible for me to get something together and meet and liaise with all these people and get it back to the board if the community's in agreement. if these community groups are in agreement for a way forward That's going right. into the summer, That's right. That's right. That maybe they decide they don't want the green use at all. I'm not sure what the outcome is going to be, but I'm looking for compromise. And if it has to come back to the board, then it's not going to happen. So I think as, as Lane's pointed out that the, 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 some of these issues involve the relationship and the agreement between Focus by here and the council in terms of, of um, and I'm trying to understand the, the, the documents here, don't look like a memorandum of understanding, but may have just been a renewed agreement um, that's before us. The issue that we had specifically, I thought, was around the markets on cruise ship days, and, and I didn't want to conflate a whole lot of other issues into this, but... Um, and yeah, I've got a meeting in five minutes too, Manu. So um, that's that's the only only issue I have on that is that I don't know how much that that we are um, requiring you to solve through this motion. Mm -hmm. um, we could add, could we add and report back to the board at the end of that um, sentence uh, after green issues and report back to the board? Would you be happy with that, Dave? Uh, adding those. Words. So you want it to come to the board before any dis community decisions are made. We've got one meeting left. It would have to be done within this next few days and a decision would have to be made very quickly, which I don't really think is feasible if we have to discuss it with a number of community groups. I'm looking for a way forward and a, and, and a compromise going into the summer season because we have a lot to unravel here. And like you say, it'll, it'll be a new board and possibly a new person who will be dealing with it. So we don't really know. We just have to get this summer going and we have to sort with council the transparency of everything that's going on moving forward. Then say that the resolution should state that, that the short term outcome that we're seeking and uh, acknowledge a longer term outcome that requires further um, agreements to be reached between um, Focus by here and the council and community. I mean, the, the, there's a lot, you've already mentioned that there's a lot involved with this. So I, yep. I'm, you know, I, I don't, I don't feel confident about just setting a, a motion, which if we come back to um, empowered you to do and required you to do all of this. So uh, if it's a temporary outcome that we're seeking a resolution for the next 12 months or something, then I'd be happy to support that um, in relation to the cruise ships and the market on those dates. I don't think it relates to the other other festivals and things like that. That doesn't seem to be 
the the issue primarily of the the signatories of the it's petition. not the petition it's not the petition but the commercial use of the village green is an issue and it's not just the cruise ships so but that's not, happy, but that's happy, not issue happy for you us. to put some word in we're right we're, we're time poor well I well the word the wording should be related to the issue before us which is the issue of yes. the use cruise ships of, so so to put in the resolve the the use of the Paihia Village Green during visits of cruise ships. So you just want it to, to read to discuss the use of the Paihia Village Green. You want to take out resolve any issues? Well, it's not any issues. There's a whole lot of issues in there, and this is not related to the petition that's before us. So what are so though? Well, there might be, but that's not what we've been asked to do. We've been asked to receive a petition, which is quite pointed over the use of the village green during cruise ship visits. Right. If there's any more issues, they should be in a report coming to us, outlining and delineating yep. more specifically what they are, not the six voices that we've heard today. And that will come. But right, to discuss, and you want to leave, discuss and resolve the Paihe village green During the current issues. So it has to be the current cruise ship season. During the current cruise ship season. And even if you're reporting back to outcomes, so that still in, empowers you to be able to, to act and to be able to do something, but back. It, that way it doesn't current. seek the board's endorsement. Okay, I'm going to read it out. out. Member Ward, Paihe Subdivision Representative, meets with council staff, Focus Paihe, Mana Whenua and community groups to discuss and resolve the Paihe Village Green issues regarding the current cruise ship season and report back to the board. Yep, okay, that's fine. So you want me to report back to the board before any decisions are made within the community? That's how I interpret that. Using the um, that it doesn't say that it's, it reports back to the board for endorsement. You're just reporting the outcome back to the board. And report the outcome back to the board. Okay. Right. Clearer? That's clearer to me. Okay. Everybody happy with that wording? I'm going to put it to the vote. <coughs> I'm in support. I'm in support. I'm in support. Yes, I'm in support, and we may have lost quorum. We've just got quorum, I think, with four of us. Manawai? I think Manawai left. So she left. Okay. So that's carried. And I have to leave. I have to leave now. My apologies. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Dave. Um, um, so that's carried. Chair, I would just say she's absent. Okay. Yep. Right. So now that um, amendment will become the substantive motion. Yeah. Oh, cool. So Dave's dropped off now, so we can't move. It. Can't so run out of oh. You there, Dave? No, he's gone. No, he's gone. Oh, shit. Oh, my goodness me. Very trying times, isn't it, this virtual stuff? No, what's trying, man, people don't set aside enough time for the meeting is what's the problem. True, true. <sighs> yes, work commitments. Okay, yeah. so with that lack of quorum, we are unable to um, move this motion, go through our <clears throat> I'm comfortable with that, with that amendment. Yep. Yes, that, that we um, that we do um, accept that. What I'm looking at now is that we cannot move um, into dealing with our action sheet. 
um, anything. I'm happy to if there's anything on there you want to discuss, but we can't move any. Um, we can't move the action sheet, Lane and Bruce. I think we have to adjourn the meeting, Madam we Chair. We do. We do. I'm not even sure we can close it with it without a quorum. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure we can. Turn it off. Yeah. Um, okay. Come on, Josh. So, with the absence of a quorum, <laughs> Josh, no, um, with the absence of a quorum, um, I will. We will okay. let item um, eight point four lie on the table for our September meeting, and I will close the meeting. Madam Chairman, thank you. Thank I, I apologise for speaking so much. Would either of you gentlemen like to do a karakia? No. Well, I'm sorry, no, Bruce. No, Bruce no, no, I'll leave. leave it for Bruce. We're all stumbling. No, no, no. no. OK, you, I, I would just thank like to thank offer. you all for attending and hopefully um, we all go away in peace <laughs> and work together at moving forward to resolve our, our difficulties and differences that challenge us on a daily basis in our lives and within our communities. And thank you all members of the public for attending. Um, hopefully you have had a reasonably entertaining morning and we and feel that you have been listened to and that your concerns have actually been um, taken on board. So with that, um, I wish you a good afternoon and we will be in touch uh, in relation to meetings and things. And thank you all for attending. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Chairman. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.